Chapter 201 Shadow Devil Leopard Translator Born to be Long Chen This is the Rubble Wasteland I'm only in charge of sending you here Everything else will be up to you I hope you can return to the monastery alive That elder patted Long Chen on the shoulder and jumped back onto the Hawk Eagle Flying back to the monastery This wasteland was tens of thousands of miles wide Huge ragged stone mountains were the only things that stood out in this wasteland the unbroken weeds that covered the land made it appear exceptionally desolate. From the bottom of a huge stone mountain, Long Chen watched as that elder left. He was still extremely grateful to him. Beside Long Chen was a silver-colored centipede. It was completely motionless, already having been cut in two. That elder had done that for him. This area was the silver centipede's territory. Having killed the silver centipede, this place should be relatively safe for a while. That elder had clearly taken special care of Long Chen by killing the silver centipede for him. It was an overlord at the peak of the mid-third rank, making it very powerful. Few magical beasts would dare to intrude upon its territory. So Long Chen had enough time to probe his surroundings. Walking over to the centipede's corpse, he used a blade to pry open its head and took out its two huge poison sacks. Other than the silver centipede's hard shell, the most terrifying part about it was its toxicity. The poison mist it could spit out would immediately cover an area of at least a mile. And most frightening of all, that poison possessed an extremely powerful corrosive strength. Other than crustacean magical beasts, almost nothing else was able to resist that corrosion. After taking out the two poison sacks, Long Chen also took out a large bucket and began to collect the silver centipede's essence blood. Unfortunately for him, this silver centipede didn't possess very much blood essence. Long Chen only managed to collect less than 50 kilograms. Although that wasn't much, Long Chen was already satisfied since his main goal had been its poison. He had searched for it for a long time before pointing it out to that elder. The elder had merely slashed with his sword, sending a ray of sword key that had easily killed that powerful silver centipede. Upon seeing that kind of strength, Long Chen had been extremely envious. He gathered all its essence blood into his bucket, but in actuality, that still wasn't true essence blood. He still needed to process it further. Taking out a medicinal pill, he threw it into the bucket. The blood inside the bucket immediately began to boil with countless bubbles popping up. Vapor streamed into the air, releasing an unpleasant smell. But the poison within the silver centipede's essence blood wasn't very strong. And so all it would do is cause someone to be a bit dizzy. Just consuming a simple antitoxin pill was fine. It took an hour for the essence blood to stop boiling. Once there was no more steam coming out of it, the blood had become much more viscous. He, it's good now. Long Chen smiled and took out a bag that was filled with medicinal powders. Those were the ingredients of the secret formula he had refined prior to coming here. The Zhuanshan Monastery Secret 10,000 Beast Essence Blood Formula. When the medicinal powder fell into the essence blood, a crackling sound came from the bucket. The scent of blood became even denser. Long Chen knew that was the effect of the medicinal powder. It would invigorate the essence blood's life energy. Two hours later, the blood once more stilled. Time to begin. Long Chen took a deep breath. Although he was very confident in his pill god memories, he was still a bit nervous about this 10,000 beast essence blood that he had manufactured himself. I must succeed. So I'm relying on you. If this fails, I really will die here. Long Chen said a prayer and then stuck his hand into the bucket. His spiritual key began to crazily absorb the essence blood. He was like a whale absorbing water. All the essence blood in the bucket immediately disappeared into his body, beginning to crazily transform. Ha ha ha, it's the exact same effect. Long Chen was absolutely delighted and relieved. The 10,000 beast essence blood he had created was the exact same as the monasteries. He had succeeded in replicating the formula. After expelling the impurities from the essence blood, all the rest of the essence blood was completely activated essence that he devoured. Long Chen had only just reached the seventh heaven stage of blood condensation. According to his normal cultivation speed, he would require at least another two months before his blood reached saturation again. But with this method, Long Chen's cultivation speed would greatly increase. As long as there was enough 10,000 beast essence blood, he could continuously advance straight through to the tendon transformation realm. Long Chen let out a breath, sensing the blood inside his body. He smiled. He... This one bucket of essence blood was equivalent to half a month's cultivation, that filled Long Chen with excitement. This would greatly cut down on his time between advancements, saving him precious time. After absorbing it all, he found a huge cave at the bottom of the stone mountain. 
that was naturally the old lair of the silver centipede. Now it became Long Chen's habitat. He knew that a third-rank magical beast's territory would be extremely large. Most likely there would not be a single other magical beast within dozens of miles. He could definitely live here safely for now. Luckily this cave was rather clean without so much excrement. It appeared the silver centipede preferred a cleaner environment. After walking into the cave, Long Chen first set up a tent. That was something he had taken from that person who had tried to rob him on his way to the monastery. He had already thrown out all those mattresses and bedding he had had, but he had kept this luxurious tent. After tidying up and resting for a bit, Long Chen looked up at the sky. It was currently noon. He set up a large pot outside. He placed one of the silver centipede's poison sacks into the iron pot. A corrosive smell immediately filled the air. Just smelling caused him to feel like his respiratory tract was being corroded. Tightly holding his nose, Long Chen lit a fire beneath the pot. He also placed over a hundred arrowheads into the poison before quickly backing away. He only began breathing again once he was a mile away. The silver centipede's poison really was too terrifying. But he had already prepared enough wood under the pan to keep the fire burning for a long time. As the arrow had simmered within the poison, they would easily begin to absorb that poison. Now he didn't need to do anything. He just patiently waited here. He currently didn't dare go exploring further. All the land bordering his little territory had to be controlled by at least a third-rank magical beast. The current him wouldn't even have a good chance of defeating an early third-rank magical beast. And if he ran into a mid-third-rank magical beast, then it wouldn't be about his probability of beating it, but the probability of him fleeing. By the time the fire burnt away all its fuel four hours later, the poison had already all boiled away. A disgusting smell still lingered in the air. He had over a hundred poisonous arrowheads now that had been dyed black by the poison. Long Chen had only just picked one up when suddenly the entire pot exploded, giving Long Chen a fright. He hastily jumped away. If he ended up pricked by one of these poison arrows, there really was a possibility he could die. That silver centipede's poison was just too powerful. That iron pot had been corroded to the point that it was now as weak as glass. Long Chen excitedly stared at those pitch black arrowheads. With these poison arrows, he would be much more confident in killing third-rank magical beasts. Seeing that the sky was already starting to darken, Long Chen returned to his tent to rest. He didn't even feel like cultivating. He set up a couple traps around with the poison arrows and then slept. The next day, Long Chen collected his traps and carefully began traveling south. Having just flown over this area on top of the Hawk Eagle yesterday, he still remembered there was a third-rank magical beast here, the Shadow Devil Leopard. The third-rank Shadow Devil Leopard speed was incomparably fast and it was exceptionally fierce. But unlike other magical beast leopards, it preferred to hunt during the day. Magical beasts weren't like humans. They didn't need to cultivate. They used flesh and blood to increase their own cultivation power. As for the Shadow Devil Leopard, its most terrifying aspect was how it could almost completely camouflage itself. Although it was a furred magical beast, its fur could actually change color in accordance to its surroundings. If it was hiding within some grass or against some rocks, it was practically impossible to see it. Sometimes magical beasts would walk right past it without knowing they had walked right in front of death. After traveling over 50 miles, Long Chen slowed down. This was around where it had been. Spreading out his divine sense, Long Chen noticed a lazy figure sunning on top of some rocks. Resting on those stones, its color had become the exact same as that of the rocks. If Long Chen hadn't noticed it yesterday jump out of some rocks to roar at them in warning, he really wouldn't have imagined a magical beast would be able to camouflage itself so well. This distance should be about right. Long Chen looked around. There was a natural pathway here. It was a perfect place to set up a trap. Originally Long Chen had been planning on digging some pitfalls, but thinking of how powerful the Shadow Devil Leopard's body was, he decided against it. The odds of that working were too low and it was also too much work to dig here. He then considered making a trigger trap like the one he had used against Marquis Ying, but then he still shook his head. That kind of trap would require him to lure the Shadow Devil Leopard there. If he was careless, he might trigger his own trap. Perhaps in his death, even the Shadow Devil Leopard would laugh at him. After pondering over it for a long time, Long Chen took out six longbows, setting up six spots along the path from which they could shoot a poison arrow, fully knocking the bows. Long Chen placed a dagger on the bowstring to prevent it from shooting. As long as that dagger was moved even the slightest, the bow would immediately shoot out its poison arrow. All of the six bows were set to the sides of the small path. 
They were all less than a couple meters from each other. With its huge body that was over 20 meters long, the Shadow Devil Leopard would very likely be hit if it walked here and all six arrows were shot at once. As long as one arrow hit, that would sharply decrease its power. Then, he could kill it much more easily. Once more going over the six bows and confirming everything was perfect, Long Chen slowly crept over to the Shadow Devil Leopard. When he was two miles from it, he stopped. If he got any closer, that would put it on guard. After weighing an egg-sized stone for a bit, he then used his full strength to throw it at the Shadow Devil Leopard's head. Chapter 202 Absorbing Essence Blood Translator Born to be Long Chen's arm strength was extremely great. That stone whistled through the air before it smashed into the Shadow Devil Leopard's head. It had just been leisurely soaking in the sun's rays on that huge boulder and hadn't been wary at all, causing it to be struck head on. The powerful force behind his throw caused it to tumble back, a large bump appearing on its head. The Shadow Devil Leopard immediately let out an earth-shattering roar and jumped up, looking around. Damn, what a hard head, Long Chen exclaimed inside. A mid-third rank magical beast really was too terrifying. His full strength strike had been completely useless. Looking around, the Shadow Devil Leopard quickly noticed Long Chen. Within an area of several miles, the only other living being present was Long Chen. So it was easy to tell who the attacker was. Letting out another roar, it quickly charged at Long Chen. Its speed was so fast that it left behind many afterimages as it traveled, almost seeming like a phantom. Crap, I misjudged the distance. Long Chen cursed inside when he saw how fast it was. With that kind of speed, he really was a bit too far from his trap. Long Chen immediately scampered away at his full speed. He pushed his footwork to the max as he fled towards his trap. But the Shadow Devil Leopard's speed was just too fast. Long Chen was still a mile away from his trap when it caught up to him. Damn it. Four legs really are better than two. Long Chen cursed and flung out a blue-colored ball of pill flame at it. The blue flame exploded loudly, giving the Shadow Devil Leopard a fright, causing it to instinctively pause for a moment. That gave Long Chen a chance to breath as he continued fleeing. But then the Shadow Devil Leopard once more roared and chased after him, this time its speed increasing even further. Long Chen knew most furred magical beasts feared fire. He was afraid if he used his blue flame, that would cause the Shadow Devil Leopard to go on guard. That was why he had used his pill flame as simply an explosive. It was loud, but its power had been weak. It only had the effect of giving it a fright. Seeing he was approaching his trap, Long Chen was relieved. Quickly rushing over, he pushed his spiritual strength to its max. Focusing on those daggers, an even larger ball of flame appeared in his hand at this time. When he stepped past the range of the trap, he threw out that large ball of flame. A huge explosion rocked the world as the blue flame immediately exploded to become 40 meters in diameter. Waves of heat surging out of it. The Shadow Devil Leopard instinctively slowed in front of this blue flame. It was precisely that moment that Long Chen used his spiritual strength to release those daggers from the bows. Six arrows shot out like lightning, shooting right at the Shadow Devil Leopard. Its body was so huge that all six arrows hit. Normally such an ordinary arrow would have difficulty breaking through the defense of a third-rank magical beast. But even third-rank magical beasts had weak spots in their defense. Its weak spot was its abdomen. Its defensive strength was relatively weaker there. So naturally Long Chen had set up his arrows to strike there. But despite that being its weakest spot, the six arrows only lightly pierced the skin, not even sinking an inch in. That kind of injury was basically nothing to a third-rank magical beast. But it was already enough for Long Chen. After those arrows pierced its body, Long Chen could see with his naked eye that its flesh was turning black. That was the effect of the intense poison's corrosion. Feeling the acute pain on its abdomen, the Shadow Devil Leopard angrily roared and charged at Long Chen. Long Chen summoned his divine ring as well as his Feng Fu battle armor. A flame blade appeared in his hands, slashing down on it. Boom. When the flame blade slashed onto the Shadow Devil Leopard, a terrifying energy sent all the surrounding rocks flying. All the withered grass hundreds of meters around them ignited. Long Chen felt a berserk energy send him flying. He only stabilized himself dozens of meters away. A charred mark had been left on the Shadow Devil Leopard, but it clearly wasn't a heavy injury. How powerful. Long Chen was startled. Furred magical beasts were innately suppressed by fire, but his blue flame salamander flame was unable to cause it any harm. That didn't mean that the flame salamander's blue flame was weak, but that his own cultivation base was just too low. His pill flame would get stronger in accordance with the quality of his spiritual key. In terms of capacity, 
Long Chen possessed just as much spiritual ki as a tendon transformation expert, perhaps even more. But before entering the tendon transformation realm, his spiritual ki's quality would be far too lacking. That was like trying to compare cotton thread to a steel wire. No matter how much thread you had, it wouldn't be able to reach a steel wire's strength. And so Long Chen suffered greatly due to his realm. If Long Chen also stepped into the tendon transformation realm, his blue flame would definitely be able to heavily injure the Shadow Devil Leopard. Buzz. The Shadow Devil Leopard suddenly opened its mouth. A black ball slowly appeared and a terrifying pressure locked Long Chen in place. An inherited skill. Long Chen was shocked. That was just like Little Snow. He knew these inherited skills were battle skills transmitted down from the bloodline and were extremely terrifying. When that black ball first appeared, it was only been the size of a watermelon. But in just the blink of an eye, it grew several meters wide. Terrifying pressure caused even the space around it to be crushed. Suddenly space shook as that black ball shot straight at Long Chen. Split the heavens. Long Chen didn't reserve anything. Striking with his full force. The flame blade in his hands explosively grew and slashed down on that ball. Boom. Long Chen's flame blade burst apart and he felt as if he had been smashed by a mountain. He was thrown into the air. Vomiting blood. Crashing into a huge mountain. Long Chen once more spat out more blood. Sensing that many of his bones were about to break. He was completely horrified. This shadow devil leopard was too powerful. Who could possibly resist such power? It was no wonder this place was called the graveyard of the exiled. At this moment he finally understood why none of the many peak geniuses had managed to walk out of this place alive. He really had underestimated this place. If a mid-third rank magical beast was already so powerful, then just how strong was the late third rank? And even fourth rank magical beasts? When the dust settled, the shadow devil leopard once more roared. Its fur was completely chaired black and a deep cut had opened on its body from which Long Chen could even see bone. Obviously Long Chen's attack just now had dealt a mortal blow to it. If Long Chen used split the heavens a couple more times, he would definitely be able to kill it. But he wasn't even able to use it one more time. The consumption of his Feng Fu battle armor was too terrifying. Using one attack in that state was already his limit. Looking at the infuriated eyes of the Shadow Devil Leopard, Long Chen fled without even thinking about it. Since he still had some energy, he really had to flee while he could. The Shadow Devil Leopard angrily chased after him, but its current speed had sharply dropped. Previously it had been faster than Long Chen, but now its speed was the same as his. Long Chen knew that its speed had dropped not only because of that injury he had caused it, but also because of the poison's corrosion. That was an excellent sign for him. As he fled, the Shadow Devil Leopard chased as fast as it could, but its speed was gradually becoming even slower. Long Chen didn't dare be careless, seeing it slow down. He also slowed down along with it, maintaining the same distance in order to let it think it might catch him if it worked just a bit harder. In that manner, Long Chen brought it running in a circle around its territory. He didn't dare run out of the area of the Silver Centipede or its territory. If he attracted more magical beasts, that would definitely be a disaster. In this manner he fled for almost a whole hour. The Shadow Devil Leopard was finally reaching its end. It was already limping and staggering, but it still continued to chase. Long Chen was already tired to death, feeling as if he was also almost out of energy. That previous attack had almost broken all his bones. After this kind of run, he really was about to collapse. Pain radiated from all over his body, but he could only clench his teeth and continue to run. Finally the Shadow Devil Leopard collapsed to the ground. Seeing that, Long Chen also sat down, consuming a key recovery pill. He focused on recovering energy, but he also didn't forget to keep track of his surroundings. After all, in this kind of vicious wasteland, he might die at any moment. He didn't dare be careless. If he hadn't set up that trap and had those poison arrows hit, it really would have been a crazy dream for him to kill the Shadow Devil Leopard. Long Chen felt even more grateful to that elder. If it weren't for him, it would have taken him forever just to kill a third rank magical beast. The elder's help had allowed him to save a great deal of time. It had actually been a covert way of helping Long Chen cheat in a way. Long Chen noticed that its breath had already stopped two hours later, but in any case, he just let it lie there dead for a bit longer. Long Chen waited for a full six hours. He had recovered to about 70 or 80 percent at this point. Only then did he carefully approach the Shadow Devil Leopard. After using his blue flame to test a couple sensitive places and seeing that there was no reaction, he finally was sure that it really was dead. In front of this huge Shadow Devil Leopard, he felt extremely tiny. 
jumping onto its head. He first cut out its crystal core. He then took out a wooden cask and began to collect its essence blood. Its body was extremely huge so there was a great deal of blood. When all the blood had been collected, there were a total of three large barrels of essence blood. However, all this blood was slightly black because of the poison. Long Chen took out a fist-sized crystal core and threw it into the barrel. Less than an hour later, the blood had already become completely red again. Fishing up the crystal core, he saw that a couple black spots had appeared on its previously completely bright body. He, using the silver centipede's crystal core to extract its own poison really is effective. The silver centipede's poison was actually very precious. That was because it was possible to kill prey with it and then reclaim the poison after. And the tool to reclaim the poison was precisely its crystal core. By absorbing the poison from the prey back into the crystal core, then turning it back into poison, he would be able to recycle it over and over. After purifying and extracting all the impurities from the essence blood, Long Chen threw the medicinal powder into the essence blood. Not long after, he had a whole barrel of 10,000 beast essence blood. Time to reap my harvest. Long Chen put his hand into the barrel. The enormous amount of essence blood was crazily absorbed into his body. Chapter 203 Slaughter You Translator Born to be as he absorbed the magical beast essence blood, his blood energy continuously grew. Two hours later, he had completely absorbed all the essence. Long Chen's blood had finally reached its saturated state. In other words, Long Chen could proceed with the next purification. Time to strike while the iron is still hot. Long Chen took a deep breath and his Feng Fu star spiritual key began to crazily circulate as he attempted to break through the next barrier. Long Chen's blood was boiling and surging, emitting a loud rumbling sound. It was like boiling underground magma. Endless energy was igniting. That pure energy was being sent through every nook of his body. Boom. Long Chen's aura exploded out. Stones flipped hundreds of meters through the air. A powerful key wave shot out in every direction. Haha, <laughs> I finally reached the 8th heaven stage. Long Chen set out a delighted exclamation. Clenching his fist, he felt an endless energy surging out of him. In fact, he felt that he had so much energy that he would explode if he didn't use it. Breaking wind fist, Long Chen punched a boulder. That boulder that was several meters large was smashed into powder. My physical body's power has increased even further. It's almost frightening to even myself. Long Chen was incredibly excited. His physical body really was his most powerful aspect. He wouldn't be an expert focusing on battle skills. The most powerful aspect of the Nine Star Hegemon body art was its ability to increase his physical body's power. It really was unfortunate that cultivating in it was so slow. Otherwise there would basically be no need for him to even learn battle skills. No matter how his opponents came at him, he could just let out a single punch to crush them. The Nine Star Hegemon body art's path focuses on the physical body. I can't waste time on battle skills or other things. I have to focus on it and my physical body. Having reached the 8th heaven stage, Long Chen found his own physical strength had multiplied several times. Now he really understood what the hegemon body part of this technique's name meant. Battle skills could make his attacks even sharper, but without his physical body as the foundation, they would all be useless no matter how powerful they were. It was just like split the heavens. Although he could now use it confidently without worry of a backlash. He found that as his cultivation base increased, split the heavens power also increased greatly, becoming more and more terrifying. Other than its own power, that was also because Long Chen's physical body was growing stronger. That previous wind-breaking fist he had tested just now was essentially useless to the current him. Just his punches alone were comparable to Earth-class battle skills. That showed how powerful his physical body had become. Long Chen had confirmed the focus of his cultivation. He wouldn't waste his time chasing after powerful techniques of battle skills. It would be better to focus on increasing his cultivation base with the 9-star hegemon body art. After reaching the 8th heaven stage, Long Chen rested for a day to become accustomed to his new strength. On the next day, he once more began searching for new targets. This rubble wasteland really was worthy of being called the graveyard of the exiled. Powerful third-rank magical beasts were everywhere. But Long Chen always picked his targets extremely carefully. First he selected those defensively weaker furred magical beasts. Not even considering targeting the scaled magical beasts. One reason was because Long Chen's arrows were unable to break through their defenses. But the other reason was that every scaled magical beast possessed a powerful resistance to poison. His poison arrows would basically be useless. Furthermore, the absolute majority of them were cold-blooded. They had more flesh but less essence blood. 
so it was simply not worth it. Long Chen was able to use his powerful spiritual strength to observe distant magical beasts. He prepared traps in advance and made meticulous plans. Although Long Chen had advanced to the 8th heaven stage and his physical body had become incomparably powerful, he didn't become egotistical at all. He never chose mid-third rank magical beasts again. This was no game. A mistake was death. Long Chen wouldn't treat his own life as a game. Ever since arriving at the rubble wasteland, he had completely broken the relative stability there. The angry roars of powerful magical beasts would occasionally ring out. Magical beast after magical beast disappeared. After another half a month, there were a total of seven third rank magical beasts who had fallen to his hands. But what appalled Long Chen was that even after absorbing seven more third rank magical beasts' essence blood, his blood had still yet to reach saturation. He sensed that it had only reached around the halfway level. In other words, if he wanted to reach the ninth heaven stage, he would have to kill at least another seven third rank magical beasts. That kind of difficulty actually delighted him. That was because such a large increase in difficulty would always bring increased benefits as well. But at the moment he really needed to hurry up. He wasn't just one person in the world. He needed to return to everyone to get their revenge. His brother's blood definitely couldn't be bled for nothing. He also couldn't just let Tang Wan Er be so aggrieved for nothing. For those devoted brothers of the Heaven Earth faction, he needed to return as early as possible. Otherwise, with Gu Yang, Lai Kai and Shang, and Qi Xin's contemptible natures, they would definitely suppress their growth as much as possible. He worried that Tang Wan Er and Ye Hikia would be unable to handle that kind of oppression. But he really couldn't speed up at all. One reason was that he had to carefully select his magical beasts. He also had to set up traps and make a meticulous plan. But most importantly, Long Chen had to avoid late third rank magical beasts at all costs. If he encountered one of them, he most likely wouldn't even have the chance to flee. Worrying only brought more worries. So thinking of all that was useless. He could only continue as he had. He had already killed almost all the magical beasts he was able to within an area of 100 miles. The rest were ones he couldn't defeat Chiring for sure. Long Chen could only start searching in further regions. He had just been carefully scouting when he saw a distant person. It was essentially inconceivable for there to be someone else in this graveyard of the exiled. Long Chen hastily hid himself. Stealthily observing that person, he saw that man was in his twenties. But most strange of all was that his body didn't have any aura at all. If he hadn't seen him with his eyes, even his spiritual strength would have found it hard to sense him. He consumed an aura concealing pill. Long Chen immediately saw through some clues. That person was looking all around. He then took out a jade plate and lightly pressed. Long Chen immediately felt heat on his waist. His disciple badge had let out a fluctuation. His heart sunk. The moment that fluctuation came from his metal, that person immediately started rushing over in his direction. Haha, <laughs> Long Chen, you're still alive. That person was delighted, arriving in front of Long Chen in just a moment. Long Chen no longer had any thoughts of hiding himself anymore. He walked out openly, but he had an extremely bad feeling about this. Who are you? Asked Long Chen. Haha, <laughs> I'm Feng He, your senior apprentice brother. Elder Tu Fang sent me to protect you. Luckily you're still alive. That person laughed happily, hiding his sinister intentions. Then I'll thank senior apprentice brother Fang. To tell the truth, I've been almost frightened to death these few days. Smiled Long Chen. That's normal. Even I was terrified coming here. Come, let me bring you back. Feng He came over to help support him extremely naturally. But his aura had already begun to stealthily circulate. Long Chen had a thankful expression on without the slightest intention of denying his kindness. Senior apprentice brother Feng really is a good person. Feng He's smile became even more brilliant. He really hadn't expected to dupe Long Chen so easily. He had been previously worried Long Chen had already been eaten by a magical beast. Seeing he was so alive, as long as he subdued him, he could easily capture his spirit in the soul locking pearl. Then his mission would have been accomplished perfectly. Feng He didn't have the slightest defense raised against Long Chen. Instead, ridicule filled his eyes in the moment his hand touched Long Chen's arm. The time had come to subdue him, but suddenly he heard a whistling from behind him. Feng He was completely shocked. Long Chen was clearly right in front of him, but there was an attack coming straight for his back. Giving up subduing him at this exact moment, he tried to dodge to the side. But although he let go of Long Chen, Long Chen grabbed onto his arm, not letting him escape. Feng He looked at Long Chen's icy smile with alarm. 
He immediately realized Long Chen had long since seen through his intentions. Fuck off. He didn't even have time to look at what was coming for him from behind. But his intuition told him it possessed an extremely grave threat. His aura exploded out and he sent Long Chen flying. Although he did his best to dodge at the last moment, his shoulder was still scraped by an arrow, leaving a line of blood. He was completely startled and was about to furiously attack Long Chen when three more arrows shot at him. Unsheathing his longsword, he shot out a terrifying ray of sword key that crushed those three arrows. You dare sneak attack people. Feng Hei furiously glared at Long Chen, no longer bothering to conceal anything. Long Chen brushed off some dust and spoke slowly for him. Do you think everyone in this world is as stupid as you? Elder Tu Fang is an extremely righteous and strict person. Do you think he'd send someone to save me? And if he did, why would he send you? Furthermore, that was the decision of the sect leader. Even an idiot would realize Elder Tu Fang wouldn't do this. If I haven't guessed wrongly, you came to kill me, and the person who sent you should be that old bastard son. Feng Hei was first startled, but he then laughed. Ha, huh, I wouldn't have thought you knew so much. But since you do, I also don't need to waste my time. Hand over your spatial ring. Long Chen shook his head and lightly asked. Why should I hand over my spatial ring? Are you going to let me live if I do? Nope. But I can promise to kill you a bit faster. You won't feel any pain. Feng Hei pointed his long sword at Long Chen. Long Chen nodded. That's reasonable. If I resist, you'll cut me into pieces. That'll definitely be miserable and painful. If I don't resist, I can just die in one go. What a good idea. But I have a better idea. What idea? Asked Feng Hei. But at that moment he suddenly sensed something was wrong. A rotting smell drifted into his nose. Long Chen smiled slightly. He had finally noticed? His aura exploded and a huge flame blade appeared in his hands. To slaughter you. Chapter 204 Sly Killer Translator. Born to be Long Chen struck like lightning. His aura exploding out and a flame blade appearing in his hand which he slashed down on him. Feng Hei was completely startled. He saw that the tiny little nick on his shoulder had already turned black and he had lost feeling in his shoulder. The stink coming from it was what had finally alerted him that Long Chen's arrow had been coated with a terrifyingly powerful poison. He had just been stalling this entire time. Most frightening of all, that poison had spread completely silently. He hadn't even sensed it. If he hadn't smelled that rotting smell, he would still be clueless. Long Chen struck him in the midst of his confusion and fury. Without having even the time to examine his wound, he attacked with his long sword. Boom. What appalled Long Chen was that the moment his flame blade collided with that long sword, his flame blade directly broke down. Is this the strength of the mid tendon transformation realm? How powerful. Feng Hei didn't dare reserve anything at this point anymore. Using his full force, with one slash he destroyed Long Chen's flame blade, and now a second stab was piercing towards Long Chen. Pressure shot out of the sword making it so Long Chen was unable to dodge. He could only receive it head on. A green light enveloped the Long Sword, marking it as a powerful battle skill. Long Chen knew that he had to use his full strength at this moment. A mid-tendon transformation realm expert was too terrifying. He immediately summoned his divine ring and his Feng Fu battle armor. He also brought out the blue flame in his body and condensed it into a huge blue blade. Runes fluctuated over it. When the flame blade collided with the Long Sword this time, Long Chen was forced back a hundred meters, but his flame blade didn't collapse again. Each time his flame blade collapsed it would require him to use up a great deal of his flame energy. Condensing a new flame blade used up a great deal of spiritual ki. Furthermore, this time Feng Hei also was forced back over 30 meters by Long Chen's full force strike. He could sense his physical power sharply dropping. That was the effect of the poison, and so he hastily swallowed an antitoxin pill. But he was horrified to realize that his antitoxin pill was completely unable to cure the poison and it continued to spread. Although it had slowed down a great deal, he wouldn't be able to endure it for long. Bastard. Hand over the antidote. What are you talking about? Long Chen put his hand to his ear, acting as if he hadn't understood. If you hand over the antidote, I'll spare your life. Offered Feng Hei angrily. You're lisping too much. I can't understand what you're saying. Can you talk a bit calmer? Bastard. You're asking for it. How could Feng Hei still not understand Long Chen was just purposely drawing out the time? He furiously brandished his long sword at Long Chen, trying to kill him. Long Chen's flame blade danced in the air. He mostly tried to avoid head-on strikes, borrowing his force to fall back. He was not a match for a mid-tendon transformation expert. Split the heavens was a final trump card. If he used it but was unable to kill Feng Hei, 
he would definitely die. Currently Feng He was already poisoned. As time passed, he would gain more and more of an advantage. Rather than taking a risk, it would be better to fight while delaying as much as possible. His chance of coming out on top would increase more that way. Long Chen fought and retreated at the same time, saving as much energy as possible. The two of them ended up traveling over 300 miles in this manner. Feng He roared, realizing the poison in his body had already invaded his organs. If he still didn't obtain the antidote, he would definitely die. Inside he cursed himself for trying to be clever at first. If he had instead attacked Long Chen right at the beginning, how could he have ended up in this state? If this continued, he would end up both failing his mission and dying. He really was frantic now. He took out a medicinal pill and threw it into his mouth. That pill immediately suppressed the poison. That was a kind of precious poison suppressing pill. Its purpose wasn't to cure the poison, but to suppress the poison's eruption. That kind of suppression was like trying to hold back a flood. As the water grew higher, the dam would eventually break. When that happened, the poison would erupt and he would immediately die. If he hadn't been forced to this point, Feng He would definitely not consume such a pill. Taking this poison suppressing pill meant that if he couldn't obtain the antidote shortly, he would definitely die. But for the moment, he no longer needed to focus his energy on keeping the poison back and could fight with his full force. Die. Feng He roared and his speed exploded. He arrived in front of Long Chen in just the blink of an eye, slashing down with his sword. Long Chen was startled, hastily raising his flame blade. But this time, his flame blade completely broke down. Feng He's sword tip cut across his forehead, leaving behind a bloody cut. If he hadn't thrown his head back at that last moment, his head would have been cut in half. Long Chen took a deep breath and summoned all the spiritual key he had been keeping in reserve. Another flame blade appearing in his hands, split the heavens. All of his energy poured into his sword. That huge flame blade slashed down in an unstoppable manner. Feng He's expression changed, obviously not expecting Long Chen to be able to release such a powerful attack. This attack actually gave him a feeling of mortal danger. Falling leaf slash. Feng He shouted and his long sword once more lit up. A cold sword key swept over Long Chen's flame blade. Boom. Space almost broke apart under that intense collision. Long Chen was sent flying back a whole mile under that terrifying force, vomiting out blood. The mid-tendon transformation realm really is too powerful. That was the first time Long Chen felt such a powerlessness. He saw that his own attack had only forced Feng He back without causing any injuries. He once more charged back at him, pointing his long sword at him. Hand over the antidote and I'll spare your life. Long Chen almost rolled his eyes. It was already such a time, but he still said such idiot words. Would anyone possibly believe him? He was just about to mock him when he suddenly noticed that there was a large boulder behind Feng He. It was slowly beginning to move. Long Chen rejoiced inside. This time he had been saved, but he still put on a sensible expression. Unless you make an oath, I'll never hand over the antidote. Don't get any crafty ideas either. My storage ring is filled with thousands of medicinal pills. You'll be long dead before you can find the right antidote. Fine, I swear. If I renege my promise, let me die. Hastily swore Feng He. Just now he really had been thinking of killing Long Chen and searching for the antidote. But he gave up that idea when he heard what Long Chen said. If that was true and he had that many medicinal pills, how could he possibly find the antidote? If he ate the wrong pills, wouldn't he die even faster? Noveloon.com No, that oath isn't harsh enough. I require a poison oath. 1. Long Chen shook his head. He saw that boulder behind Feng He had already slowly risen up and stealthily released eight long hairy legs. Long Chen knew that to be the stony devil spider, a third rank magical beast. It was a true master of concealment. It was covered in veined patterns that made it look just like a boulder, making it appear just like part of the background. Even walking right past it, it would be difficult to notice it. Most terrifying of all was its incredible patience. Sometimes, it would hide for months or even years for prey to show up before it stealthily crept out. Now, the stony devil spider had already stood upright and crept just right behind Feng He. Its movements were extremely light without the slightest sound. Feng He had still yet to realize that death was right behind him. Since Long Chen wanted him to make a solemn oath, he shouted, I, Feng He, swear that if Long Chen gives me the antidote that cures my poison, I won't kill him. If I break my oath, let my intestines be pulled out, let lightning strike my down, and let me die without a burial. Seeing Long Chen just staring blankly at him, Feng He hastily demanded, Now it's fine right? 
Hand over the antidote, Long Chen impatiently urged on the incredibly slow rocky devil spider inside. He couldn't drag this out forever. Cough. About that, that's still not good enough. Can't you make it more solemn and poisonous? You also know this is something that relates to my life. I need more reassurance. Slowly said Long Chen. Bastard. Are you still trying to stall for time till the poison erupts? Fine. Then I'll just kill you right now and search on my own. Feng He furiously raised his long sword. Hey. 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 Fine. I'll hand over the antidote. Long Chen knew he couldn't delay anymore. He threw over a jade bottle to him. The antidote is inside. It's made specifically to counter your poison. Take it. But your poison has infected you too deeply. And you've also consumed that poison suppressing pill. Causing even more poison to store itself in your blood. You need the matching antitoxin crystal to cure it. Long Chen then handed the silver centipede's crystal core to Feng He. When Feng He touched that crystal care, he immediately felt the poison in his body change. It no longer crazily attacked his organs, filling him with relief. At the very least he had found an antidote for his poison. This crystal core should be enough to save his life. He hastily consumed the medicinal pill Long Chen had given him as well. Although he was no alchemist, he had a definite skill in identifying medicinal pills. He knew this was an antitoxin pill. Seeing that rocky devil spider continue moving like an elderly senior, Long Chen angrily cursed inside. Could it not speed up? But then when he saw its head slowly stretch out and it open its mouth, revealing two long poisonous fangs, he finally sighed in relief. Seeing that it was finally about to attack, Long Chen almost wept from joy. What kind of thing is this? Feng He eyed the fist-sized crystal core. Swallow in one gulp, sighed Long Chen. TCH. How am I supposed to swallow this in one gulp? Are you asking me to choke to death? Raged Feng He that crystal core was the size of a fist. And no matter how big a person's mouth was, it was impossible to swallow it. Even if you could fit it through your mouth, it wouldn't go down your throat. I wasn't talking to you, but to that thing behind you. Long Chen pointed pitifully behind him. Feng He's expression changed and he quickly turned around. But before he could, a sharp pain came from his back as a three meter long fang pierced through his body. Chapter 205 Tenth of Vestige of Blood Condensation Translator Born to be a long fang stabbed through Feng He's body. He looked in disbelief at the end of that fang protruding out of his abdomen. He roared, slashing his long sword behind him with his full force. It went without saying that Feng He was incredibly powerful. A single slash of his broke apart the stony devil spider's fang, allowing him to escape. But then he was appalled when it then opened its mouth and shot a net of web that enveloped him. That net was dozens of meters long, and even Long Chen was caught in it. But since he had only been on the fringe and since he hastily dodged at the first moment, he just managed to get out. A-H-H-H. Feng He let out a mournful cry as he was tightly wrapped by that web. He was like a fish caught in a net, unable to escape. The stony devil spider then reeled in its web. In an instant, Feng He's legs were caught in its mouth. Intense pain and terror caused him to scream. Even Long Chen's hair stood on end when he saw this scene of him being eaten alive. Die you damn brood. Feng He roared. Everything below his waist had already entered its mouth. With his last energy he slashed his long sword down on its head. Cliff breaking strike. Terrifying sword key directly sliced apart its head. He had managed to kill this third rank magical beast in a single blow. But he hadn't managed to save himself. Half his body had disappeared into its body and his stomach had already been pierced by the stony devil spider's poisonous fang. He was already on his deathbed now. Long Chen sighed and walked up to him. Why did you bother with this? Why did you come to such a dangerous place to kill me? What was more important than your life? Feng He's vitality was rapidly fading. He knew he would definitely die. Why did I bother? Sigh. Long Chen. You've won. Long Chen shook his head. I didn't win. You just lost to your greed. After coughing painfully a couple times, Feng He's face became black as well. The poison had already spread throughout his entire body. Since I'm about to die. I'll tell you it was Elder Sun who told me to come kill you. He wanted me to bring back your spatial ring and to seal your spirit in the soul locking pearl. If you want revenge, go find him. Those were Feng He's final words. One of the senior disciple level experts of the monastery, an excellent mid-tendon transformation expert, had died miserably here. That really was regretful. Taking off Feng He's ring, he took out a fist-sized pearl. Looking at it, Long Chen's mood sunk. This was definitely a soul locking pearl. It was an extremely sinister tool that could capture a person's soul. After sealing a person's soul into the pearl, 
You could use all kinds of methods to torture that person's soul. That person wouldn't even be able to die on his own. You old bastard. You really are vicious. You actually wanted to imprison my soul. You're definitely after the nine-star hegemon body art. Long Chen ground his teeth. As expected, his suspicions had been correct. No matter where you went, there would always be evil people. Feng Hei, although I didn't know you, I know you only said that so I'd go find Elder Sun for revenge. Whether I die or Elder Sun dies, you'd at least get revenge on one. Who would have thought you'd be so smart right before dying? But you've succeeded. Not long from now, I'll definitely send him to accompany you. I hope you train hard on the other side. Don't let that old bastard bully you once I send him your way. I actually hope you'll be able to bully that old bastard around in death for me. He also took Feng Hei's longsword. Although it wasn't a heavy weapon, it was made of excellent material. With just a single slash it had managed to break apart the stony devil spider's hard fang. It was definitely extremely sharp. Currently his flame blade wasn't strong enough. Using it to display split the heavens wouldn't be as good as using a real weapon. This sword would increase split the heavens power even more. Of course, Long Chen was a thrifty person and also gathered the stony devil spider's essence blood as well. Unfortunately it didn't possess much essence blood at all. After he finished gathering the essence blood, he looked at Feng Hei's corpse. Hesitating for a few moments, he still decided to dig a grave for him. No matter what, they were all from the same sect once a person died. The hatred and enmities relating to him also concluded. He didn't want to leave his corpse out in the wilderness. After gathering everything, Long Chen carefully returned back to his own encampment. Three days later, Long Chen had fully recovered and began to crazily start hunting again. Now that Feng Hei had died, the crisis had temporarily passed. But Long Chen had seen just how great the difference was between him and his senior apprentice brothers. He was almost unable to withstand a single blow. Previously when he had fought with Wu Qi, he had realized that his senior disciples were incredibly powerful, but he had still not thought that they had reached such a level. As a small squad leader of the law enforcers, Wu Qi's cultivation base should definitely be excellent even amongst his peers. After being punished by Elder Tu Fang, he had lost a great deal of prestige. Long Chen had no idea when he would come for him for revenge. So before he did that, he would have to increase his strength as much as possible. Otherwise he could only suffer. But of course, that inner will refused to allow him to suffer loss like that. He could only rapidly increase his strength. So from that day onwards, Long Chen began to hunt magical beasts even faster. With that long sword, Long Chen could now kill mid-third rank magical beasts much easier. Furthermore, he had found an even more efficient method to kill them. First he would use his full force with Split the Heavens. As long as he shot one poison arrow into the wound formed by Split the Heavens, all he had to do was dance around until they died to the poison. He began to hunt magical beasts en masse. These magical beasts were all extremely tyrannical with low intelligence. As long as he didn't encounter any of them that were stronger than him, it was guaranteed he would be able to escape at least. With that kind of hunting method, Long Chen's efficiency went from one magical beast every two days to two magical beasts every day. Three days later, Long Chen had absorbed seven magical beasts essence blood, allowing him to advance to the ninth heaven stage. After reaching the ninth heaven stage of blood condensation, Long Chen's strength grew even more. But unfortunately, without a heavy weapon, he was unable to truly bring out the full potential of his powerful body. Long Chen swore to himself that once he returned, he would definitely obtain a heavy weapon. Otherwise he would be unable to properly use his strength, no matter how powerful he was. Now that he had reached the ninth heaven stage, Long Chen had the confidence to hunt even more and faster without needing to be so careful. As long as it wasn't a late third rank magical beast, Long Chen would be able to defeat Chiring his opponent without a problem with his poison arrows. As time passed, the magical beasts around him gradually grew sparser. Long Chen had no choice but to increase his range. The rubble wasteland had ended up becoming a youth's hunting ground. Occasionally the roar of a magical beast would echo out. Time passed quickly. On this day, Long Chen had just finished absorbing essence blood when his blood began to surge. A whistling sound came from his body that could be heard clearly even from a mile away. Boom. A terrifying wave of key shot out along with an intense pressure. The current Long Chen looked like a divinity disdainfully looking down on all. Haha, <laughs> I finally reached the tendon transformation realm. Long Chen laughed crazily at up a huge boulder. Feeling the surging power within his body, he had an urge to tear apart heaven and earth. Oh, wait a sec. 
I haven't reached tendon transformation yet. My tendons haven't changed at all and they aren't being nourished at all. Long Chen suddenly realized something was off. He realized his blood had once more returned to its depleted state. That was the situation that would occur every time he advanced to vestiges in the blood condensation realm. Each time he advanced, his body's blood vessels would widen slightly, increasing his blood capacity. So once the vessels were enlarged, even though he didn't lose any blood, he would not be at his max capacity any longer. That would occur every time he purified his blood and advanced. But this was the tenth time now. In other words, normally he should have reached the tendon transformation realm. But seeing what was going on, his heart began to pound. Could it be the nine-star hegemon body arts blood condensation realm also has 13 levels? Long Chen couldn't help being stupefied. In order to advance out of the ninth heaven stage, he had killed a total of 37 third-rank magical beasts. Only then had he gathered enough essence blood. He had basically killed all the magical beasts he could within a range of hundreds of miles. Then according to the nine-star hegemon body arts increase in difficulty, wouldn't he need to kill 73rd rank magical beasts to reach the 11th Havenstage? Then the 12th Havenstage would require 140 magical beasts, and the 13th Havenstage would require 280. Counting on his fingers, Long Chen's excitement rapidly deflated. He would need to kill at least 500 third rank magical beasts before being able to reach the tendon transformation realm. 500. Those weren't 500 hogs for the slaughter. Wasn't this just a joke? The level of difficulty for a blood condensation rookie to kill 500 third rank magical beasts was essentially impossible. He would need to hunt forever to do that. Long Chen angrily cursed. He had no spirit blood, spirit bone, or spirit root. So the nine-star hegemon body art was his only option. After cursing for a while, he had no choice but to accept his fate. Oh wait, my blood has changed color? There's a bit of gold to it now. Long Chen suddenly paused. When he had examined his inner body, he saw that specks of gold had appeared in his blood, looking like golden sand. This nine-star hegemon body art really is strange. Ugh, might as well keep hunting. Cursing and cursing, Long Chen once more began to explore. But when he killed another third-rank magical beast and began to absorb its essence blood, he found that the energy from that essence blood almost had no effect on him. What's going on? After absorbing that energy, all that had happened was that the golden sand within his blood had increased ever so slightly. The effect was very low, almost imperceptible. Damn, damn, this time I'm screwed. Perhaps to advance I'll need fourth-rank magical beast essence blood. Long Chen's heart grew cold. According to the normal increase in difficulty of the nine-star hegemon body art, his hypothesis was most likely correct. Magical beasts below the mid-third rank were probably almost useless to him now. At the very least he would need to kill late third rank magical beasts. But most likely only fourth rank magical beast essence blood would really let his cultivation base explosively grow again. But fourth rank magical beasts? Long Chen could only laugh at that. He didn't want to become a snack for a magical beast. Okay, whatever. I've already been away for a month. It's time to return. Although I haven't broken through to the tendon transformation realm, with my current power, it should be enough to handle them. Long Chen stood at a tall boulder and looked towards the south. That was the direction of the monastery. It was time to return home. Novaloon.com CM Chapter 206 Long Chen Returns Translator Born to be within the Zhuanshan Monastery, the third faction competition was about to begin. During the first faction competition, Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu's factions had been betrayed, causing them to have zero flags at the end, ranking them last. Then Long Chen had furiously killed those traitors and had been exiled to the rubble wasteland. The chances of him returning alive were extremely slim. After all, that was the graveyard of the exiled. Ever since the monastery had been established, there had not been a single core disciple who had managed to walk out of the wasteland alive. Furthermore, all those exiled core disciples had already broken through to the tendon transformation realm, while Long Chen had only been at the seventh heaven stage of blood condensation, so the chances of him surviving were incredibly remote. Long Chen's departure had been a large blow to Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikui's morale, but they were comforted by the fact that even after such a huge setback, there was not a single person who left their faction. After consuming the medicinal pills Long Chen had left for them, their faction's cultivation bases once more explosively grew. Even without the support of many points, they weren't at all inferior to others. Whenever they went to the mission distribution building, they were only been able to receive a couple garbage missions. 
Furthermore, they were unable to obtain even those trash missions on every day. The majority of the missions had already been taken by the other factions. There was zero chance of them obtaining a high-level mission with more rewards. The most infuriating part was that whenever they went to go accept missions, they were often provoked, ridiculed, and abused by the other factions. That had caused Tang Waner and Yez Hikyu to be endlessly infuriated. Even just receiving the most lowest level missions brought other people's provocations onto them. If they were then unable to accomplish those missions, not only would they not get any points, but they would also be intolerably bullied. Once the first faction competition had ended and Long Chen had been exiled, all the factions in the monastery had formed three alliances. One was the alliance led by Gu Yang. They had a total of seven factions, and they were the absolute strongest. Then there was another alliance headed by Tang Waner and Ye's Hikyu. They had a total of five factions. Other than Song Mingyuan and Li Qi, the fifth person to bring their faction to support them was Luo Kang. That was the first stranger who had expressed his support of Long Chen. There had been others who had stood next to him to express their support for him back then. However, once he had been expelled, they had all maintained their silence. Some even furtively joining Gu Yang's alliance. That was definitely infuriating. But Tang Waner was also helpless. She had seen the cruelness of reality. Of the seven other factions that had stood up for Long Chen, only Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang had truly been in support of Long Chen and would have left with him. The other four had clearly just been awed by Long Chen's terrifying strength and wanted to get closer to him. Those four were not idiots. Although Gu Yang was powerful. There was no way he would be able to resist both Tang Waner and Ye's Hikyu. Most importantly, within their factions was Long Chen with his limitless potential. Even at the seventh event stage of blood condensation he was able to just barely fight off against Tendon Transformation Core Disciples. That displayed his potential to everyone. So back then they had thought that with everyone supporting him, they would definitely be able to save Long Chen. That way, not only would they embody justice, they would also be able to get a powerful companion. But later the sect leader had appeared and exiled Long Chen to the rubble wasteland, stupefying them. In their eyes, Long Chen was already definitely dead. They had had no choice but to rethink their alliance. Some of them had barely hesitated to throw themselves to Gu Yang, subserviently joining his faction. Other than Gu Yang and Tang Waner's alliances, there was also a neutral alliance. That alliance was led by Guan Wenan. He was the fourth core disciple who had revived his ancestral mark. His combat power was incredibly powerful and he was extremely arrogant. But in front of three others who had also awakened their ancestral marks, he couldn't help being nervous. That was especially true when it came to Gu Yang. He had already awakened his ancestral mark before joining the monastery. So his strength was definitely the greatest of everyone. With Gu Yang and Tang Waner taking opposing sides, he had smartly chosen to be neutral. He didn't curry favor to Gu Yang, but he also didn't strike Tang Waner while she was down. He led four factions to do their own things. They wouldn't offend either of the two other alliances. One month later, while Long Chen had been busy killing third-rank magical beasts in the rubble wasteland, the second faction competition had begun. This time the competition was even more intense than the first time. After all the flags had been collected, Gu Yang and Tang Waner's alliances began a fierce fight, seeing their hated enemies. Both parties' eyes turned red and fought with their full strength to snatch the other party's flag. But what caused everyone to turn pale with fright was that when Gu Yang's full strength exploded and all the runes on his body lit up, he was able to fight off against both Tang Waner and Ye's Hikyu on his own. Only then had everyone realized that Gu Yang really was too powerful, worthy of being someone who had revived his ancestral mark long before joining the monastery. He was already completely familiar on how to use its runic power. But as for Tang Waner and Ye's Hikyu, they had only awakened their ancestral marks for two months. They were completely unable of wielding the full power of their ancestral mark. The two of them had fought with their full strength, but they had been unable to defeat Chiring him. The alliances were originally five factions against seven. That was a definite disparity. And now Gu Yang had fended off their two strongest experts on his own. They had immediately lost. When the bell had rang. Tang Waner and Ye's Hikyu's flags had all been completely stolen. There was no way around it. The two of them were separated by far too great of a disparity. Two enemy core disciples had directly charged through Tang Waner and Ye's Hikyu's ranks. Those inner and outer disciples were completely unable to stop them. The most regrettable thing of all was that those two had not only stolen their flags, they had even cruelly injured the disciples who dared resist them. 
crushing their bones and snapping their tendons. There were only a few people in their factions who were still able to crawl after the bell rang. The others all lay on the ground, too severely injured to move. Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu had been infuriated to see that scene of their disciples lying there wounded. Tears of anger had streamed down their faces. They cursed their own helplessness, but they were also powerless to change it. At the same time, they also realized just how cruel the struggle in the monastery was. During the faction competition, you could do anything other than killing someone. And so Qishan and Lai Qianchang had struck especially viciously, all in order to break their disciples' confidence. They wanted them to feel fear and to surrender completely. Furthermore, Qishan and them had done it extremely slyly. They purposely targeted those people on Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu's side. As for Song Mingyuan and them, although they desperately wanted to save them, their strength was unable to push back their own enemies. They could only watch as they were humiliated. That kind of helplessness was incredibly infuriating, enough for them to want to kill them. But they also didn't have Long Chen's guts to kill people. Their anger could only smolder inside them. They all realized a certain possibility that this was all part of Qizin's scheme. Although all five of their factions had joined into an alliance, they only targeted Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu's factions. One reason was because they wanted to leave some leeway. They didn't want to completely offend their three factions. And it also was a kind warning. But more importantly, it was to incite disharmony between their factions. Although they wanted to help, they were powerless to. In the end, Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu's people were all beaten to the ground, their flags stolen. But as for their three factions, they were basically unharmed. Although they didn't have many flags, their flags at least hadn't been snatched away. This was to sow seeds of discord between them. The people under those three factions saw that scene and so they didn't fight with their full force. They didn't actually want to help and be beat like that. And it was because of that that over the next few days, their outer disciples had begun to voice their objections to their alliance. But after a strict oppression by the core disciples, they once more calmed down. However, the seed of discord had already been planted. If they didn't resolve it, sooner or later it would rupture. At this time, the sun had just risen from the east. Its warm rays covered the land, but that warm sunlight was unable to change the explosive atmosphere on the battlefield. This was the battlefield of the faction competition. The flags had already been scattered throughout. Seventeen factions had gathered here. Today was the day of the third faction competition. The atmosphere was extremely tense. Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu knew that if they were last again, they really would be done for. After Long Chen had led, he had used their faction points to buy medicinal ingredients and had refined for three days and nights all so that everyone wouldn't fall too far behind. That had also been to lay some foundation for the second faction competition. But after Gu Yang had taken first place, he had received a huge amount of points. Not only had he bought medicinal pills, he had also gotten some treasures that could assist their cultivation. Their power had sharply risen, and so even though Long Chen had left that assistance, they had not obtained any superiority. It was obvious how beneficial the rewards for first place were. The top three places were occupied by Gu Yang, Qi Xin, and Lai Qian Shang. Last time they had shaken them off, now this time the distance had only grown. Tang Wan'er, how are you? Have you thought it over? If you join me, your situation will immediately improve. Otherwise you'll forever be last. Gu Yang arrogantly looked at Tang Wan'er. Keep dreaming. Tang Wan'er truly loathed him now. Gu Yang didn't care and just laughed. Are you still thinking about that pretty boy? Haha, <laughs> it's been two months but he still hasn't returned. That means he's long since been turned into magical beast dung. Gu Yang, this time I won't let you get your way. Tang Wan'er clenched her teeth. Gu Yang sneered. Up to you. But I think that once you've been last for three consecutive times, you'll forever be on the bottom. Looking at the arrogant Gu Yang, Tang Wan'er took a deep breath and turned to Ye's Hikyu. Sisters Hikyu, if we fail again, I'll go kill them. Ye's Hikyu nodded. An icy intent surfaced in her eyes. I'll go with you. We'll kill these bastards as revenge. In these two months, there hadn't been the slightest news from Long Chen. That was no good sign. The two of them were incomparably aggrieved and furious. This time they finally ended up feeling killing intent for Gu Yang and them. Fighting and killing people were two different concepts. Fighting was based on who was stronger, but killing was based on who was more vicious, who didn't fear death. Now that Long Chen had died, Tang Wan'er's heart felt as if it was being stabbed by needles. She hated those bastards in front of her. She would definitely bring them down with her. Everyone prepare. This faction competition begins wait. Sorry, 
I'm late. Suddenly a voice cut off senior apprentice brother Wan's announcement. People turned with astonishment to see a figure walking over from the direction of the rising sun. Chapter 207 On the verge of a huge battle translator. Born to be hearing that voice. Everyone was completely silent. They all slowly turned to look in the direction of that voice. A figure was slowly walking over to everyone. The morning sun illuminated his back. Its golden rays filling the entire sky. The sun shined on his back. Making it so they couldn't see his face. On his shoulder was a bone blade that was even longer than his body. Just like that. He walked over to everyone. When that person appeared. An intense scent of blood blew over. Causing everyone's hearts to tremble. A profound terror came from their spirits. Long. Long Chen. When that person finally walked close enough. People finally managed to see his face. He had sword-like eyebrows and a hawk nose. He had a light stubble on his face that gave his face a bit of a rugged look. If it wasn't Long Chen, then who could it possibly be? Long Chen had really returned? No one could believe their eyes. Long Chen had returned alive from the place known as the Graveyard of the Exiled? Long Chen was wearing a set of golden leather armor that was dazzling under the sunlight. But as he got closer, people saw that it was actually an extremely crudely manufactured snack -a skin robe. When they saw those golden scales, they were absolutely shocked. That was the skin of the Golden Horned Python. That was an extremely powerful existence amongst third-rank magical beasts. Its snack -a skin was famed for its defensive strength. But Long Chen was now using it as clothing. Then looking at the huge blade on his shoulder, they saw it wasn't a real blade, but a sawed-down tooth. That tooth was three meters long, its entire body completely jade white. There were actually some natural decorative patterns on the bone blade. Not one person present was able to see through the origins of those decorative patterns. But there were two people in the distance who had. Two Fang sighed as he watched from a distance. He really is a legendary existence. He actually managed to return from a path of sure death. Furthermore he only needed a short two months. That really is shocking. But most shocking of all is that bloody aura on his body. That's something formed from the resentment of powerful magical beasts. I really don't know how many of them he killed to condense such a terrifying murderous aura. And that golden horned python's skin is frightening enough on its own. But he actually has a tooth from a fourth rank dragon blood saber tooth tiger. I really can't understand him. Originally he had thought Long Chen would require at least half a year to return. That was because there were countless third rank magical beasts on the way back. And even fourth rank magical beasts might appear. He would have to travel extremely carefully every day. Ling Yunzi stared at that domineering figure and smiled. This fellow really does have some tricks. He was actually able to kill a golden horned snake. But I'm certain he didn't do that with force. He must have used some sort of stratagem. And that bone blade isn't all that rare. It's just a tooth had fell out a long time ago. He probably just found it. It releases a pressure belonging to a fourth rank magical beast. Although it's very faint. Magical beasts are extremely sensitive to that kind of pressure. That's probably why Long Chen was able to return to the monastery so quickly. Only then did Tu Fang realize that Bone Blade possessed a pressure belonging to a fourth rank magical beast. When other magical beasts sensed that pressure, they would quickly flee. It was no wonder Long Chen could return to quickly. Long Chen's aura is extremely strange. It seems like the peak of blood condensation, yet also not the peak. His blood has yet to reach complete saturation. Tu Fang was surprised when he sensed Long Chen's cultivation base. Yes, it really is strange. But I believe there will be a pretty good play to watch now. Come, have some tea. Ling Yunzi handed him a cup of tea and smiled. He was finding his own life had become more and more brilliant ever since Long Chen had appeared. When Long Chen finally arrived in front of everyone, Tang Wan'er was unable to restrain herself any longer and began to cry. Long Chen. Not caring about everyone's gazes, she hugged Long Chen and cried. She didn't know when, but at some time, Long Chen had occupied an irreplaceable part of her heart. Hey, so many people are watching. Long Chen laughed, his heart extremely moved. Normally the two of them would quibble and bicker, but once he had left, she had realized how important he was to her. You scoundrel. Tang Wan'er lightly hit Long Chen a couple times, and then wiped away her tears with embarrassment. Her face red. At this time Ye's Hiki who also walked over. Although her expression was still icy, there was some warmth in her eyes. How about we have a group hug? I can't favor just one person, laughed Long Chen. Ye's Hiki who looked at his raised arms and merely said, Congratulations on returning alive. Fine, I guess Ye's Hiki who still hasn't learned how to be humorous, thought Long Chen. 
He could only awkwardly put down his arms. Brother Long, we all knew you would return alive. At this time Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang also all walked over. The three of them were delighted that Long Chen had returned. HMPH. So what if you've returned alive? Isn't that just some dog sheet lock? What can a trash who is still just in the blood condensation realm possibly do? Qishin icily sneered at them disdainfully. Song Mingguan and them were angered. Long Chen turned to Qishin and smiled slightly. Your mouth really is as loathsome as ever. This time I've gained much from my exile. In a bit I'll have to properly thank you for everything. Although Long Chen was smiling, his eyes were completely icy. With that bloody aura on his body, he really was like a death god, causing people's heart to turn cold. HMPH, you're just at the peak of blood condensation. Don't act like you're some genius. I've already said that if you dare block my path again, I'll ruthlessly crush you into pulp. Gu Yang snorted disdainfully and pointed his fist at Long Chen. Long Chen then lazily looked at Elder Sun who was above. Elder Sun, you seem so shocked to see me return alive. How come your face is so green? Elder Sun truly was shocked. He couldn't even believe his eyes. Feng Hei failed? That's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Feng Hei is at the top of the mid-tendon transformation realm. There's no way he couldn't kill Long Chen. For Long Chen to return but him not to, there must have been some sort of accident. Most likely he encountered a powerful fourth rank magical beast and was killed. Elder Sun had been extremely puzzled, but after he thought about it for a while he calmed down. He was certain that if Feng Hei had encountered Long Chen, he would have definitely died. And so since Feng Hei hadn't encountered Long Chen, that meant the matter of him sending someone to kill Long Chen wouldn't be exposed. But seeing that ridiculing smile on Long Chen's face, his heart began to pound. He once more began to wonder if he was wrong. That was because Long Chen's gaze was filled with endless ridicule and disdain. He was now uncertain whether or not Long Chen had seen Feng Hei. If the monastery were to learn he had sent someone to kill Long Chen, then he would definitely die a miserable death under the monastery's strict rules. What? Elder Sun, how come your face is now turning blue? Are you trying to show us your remarkable skills in changing face color? How could Long Chen not see through Elder Sun's thinking? But he also didn't say anything about it at this time. That was because he had no proof that Feng Hei had been sent by Elder Sun so he was unable to bring down Elder Sun yet. And if he said anything, that would just alarm him and put him on guard. Long Chen was someone who remembered his enmities. He would never forgive someone who had schemed to kill him. How presumptuous. How dare you disrespect your elders. Elder Sun furiously shouted. No matter what the situation was, he was still an extremely prestigious elder of the monastery. Being jeered at by a disciple naturally infuriated him. How did I disrespect my elders? I just said that elder's face is changing color. That's not disrespect. Long Chen lightly smiled. He knew Elder Sun was trying to cover up his shock. Just keep putting on that play you old bastard. When you finally can't keep acting, we'll settle our debt. Senior apprentice brother Wan hastily opened his mouth when he saw Elder Sun's expression turn dark. Long Chen, since you're returned, hurry up and return to your faction. The faction competition is about to start. Long Chen nodded to senior apprentice brother Wan. He actually respected this steady senior apprentice brother of his much more. He whispered to Tang Wan'er, How's the current situation? At this point Tang Wan'er had recovered from her shock. She quickly gave him a rundown of what had happened and their current situation, emphasizing how powerful Gu Yang was. He, boss, now that I've returned, you can finally carry me. Only now did Guo Ran have a chance to say something to Long Chen. Don't worry, this time won't be the same as last time. You won't need to run away. Just sit there. They'll kneel down and hand their flags to you. Smiled Long Chen. Before Guo Ran could reply, senior apprentice brother Wan had already lit the incense stick. Long Chen gave Tang Wan'er an instruction to grab the flags just like they had the first time. Dong. The bell rang out, and all the core disciples rushed out, grabbing as many flags as they could. But Long Chen saw that everyone was much faster than before. In just a couple breaths, all the flags had been taken. It appeared they had learned greatly from their experience. These people were already used to this kind of competition. Long Chen had only managed to get five flags before there were none left on the ground. Once all the flags disappeared, there was immediately a group that rushed to the edge. That was Guan Wenan's neutral alliance. He would only watch, but this time he fled further away than before, obviously afraid of being drawn into their fight. Ye Hikyu, Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang all drew closer to Tang Wan'er. 
They formed up into a battle formation extremely smoothly and quickly. They had only just set up their formations when Gu Yang charged over with a heaven-shaking roar. Guo Ran, called out Long Chen. Yes boss, remember, when they come to give you flags in a bit, if they aren't kneeling on the ground, we won't accept them. Do you understand? Long Chen then charged out with his bone blade. Following Long Chen, Tang Wan'er, Ye's Hikyu and the others all rushed out as well. A huge battle was about to commence. Chapter 208 Blowing them away Translator Born to be as soon as Long Chen rushed out. Tang Wan'er caught up and whispered. Long Chen, I'll let you guys handle this side. Leave Gu Yang to us. She and Ye's Hikyu rushed over to Gu Yang. Without even saying anything, the two of their auras exploded out as they began to crazily fight. The two of them held huge wind and ice blades as they fought against Gu Yang. Both of them already hated that Baldi to death. If Long Chen hadn't arrived now, they really might have launched a suicide attack to bring him to death with them. But since Long Chen had returned completely fine, their confidence had returned. Even if they lost again this time, with Long Chen present, they would quickly be able to chase up to them. Gu Yang also didn't dare be at all negligent in front of the two of them. He exploded out with his full force. The three of them were already old opponents. They immediately began fighting at full force. Gale winds whistled and explosions rang out over and over. Long Chen directly rushed into a sea of enemies. Behind him were also Song Mingyuan's group of three. The other disciples had all been left behind to defend. Long Chen, I'll throw you out with the other trash. Of the enemies rushing to meet them, a core disciple was the fastest and arrived in front of Long Chen. He thrust his sharp spear at him. Long Chen recognized that person. He had once stood by him in support after he had killed those five traitors. But after he was exiled, this person had directly joined Gu Yang's alliance. Now he was also the first one to attack him. Long Chen supposed he was trying to show his loyalty to Gu Yang. The moment that spear neared his body, Long Chen used a single hand to tightly grab that spear, completely stopping it in its tracks. That shocked everyone. That was a core disciple and his power was perhaps only slightly lacking in comparison to Lai Kai and Shang. But his spear was caught by Long Chen just like that. His bone blade was still just resting on his shoulder. He had stopped that attack with just his left hand. Most shocking of all was that Long Chen's body hadn't moved in the slightest. It was like he was simply holding onto a child's plaything. That person hastily tried to pull his spear back, but he was appalled to realize his spear was unable to move at all while Long Chen's hand was clenched around it. He was unable to move it in the slightest no matter how hard to try. While he was still shocked over this, Long Chen sent out a lightning fast kick. Before that person could even react, he was kicked right in the stomach. The sound of bones breaking rang out as that person shot back like a cannonball. Long Chen's strength was too terrifying now. The other disciples who had been rushing forward ended up being smashed by that person, causing a burst of screams and snapping bones. Other than that core disciple, over a dozen people behind him had been struck, their bones breaking and vomiting blood. Long Chen then threw the spear. It shot out like a black thunderbolt towards that core disciple. It was incomparably fast. By the time he realized what was happening, that spear had already arrived in front of him. He was scared stiff, but that spear merely brushed past his cheek. That long spear sunk into the ground and immediately pierced straight through, leaving only a small hole to show where it had entered the ground. Just that toss had been incredibly powerful. If he had been struck by that spear, even ten lives wouldn't have been enough. He was trembling with fear, his face completely pale. Looking at Long Chen, dread filled his eyes. One move. No, not even one move. He defeated a core disciple just like that. That stupefied everyone. From the very start, Long Chen had barely moved. He was still standing in his original position. All he had done was move his arm to capture and throw that spear. Just that had been able to defeat Chiring the core disciple. Lai Kai and Chang and the others' expressions greatly changed. Long Chen hadn't revealed the slightest bit of aura just now or used a battle skill. He had defeated him relying solely on the strength of his physical body. Both parties had been about to start a chaotic battle. But Long Chen's one attack stunned everyone so much that they all stopped. Song Mingyuan's group of three were also completely shocked at that lazy figure with a bone blade on his shoulder. Don't be careless. Everyone attack with your full strength. We're still much stronger. Just leave Long Chen for me and brother Lai Qishin shouted and his aura exploded out. A water blade appeared in his hand and slashed down on Long Chen. Lai Kai and Chang also attacked with him, wanting to defer Long Chen in the quickest time. Following Qi orders, all their people charged at the Heaven Earth Faction's alliance. 
Other than that core disciple that had been heavily injured by Long Chen, there were still three other core disciples charging at Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang. Long Chen, don't think that some peak of blood condensation is anything good. In front of a tendon transformation expert, you're still nothing. Qishin once more brought his water blade slashing down, this time erupting using his absolute full strength without leaving anything behind. Long Chen smiled slightly. That smile contained ridicule, contempt, and absolute disdain. His bone blade finally moved, cutting across the space, causing heaven and earth to rumble. When the bone blade collided with Qishin's water blade, the water blade didn't have the slightest bit of power to resist and immediately collapsed. As for Qishin, he was sent tumbling across the ground, appearing incredibly miserable. When he once more looked at Long Chen, his eyes were filled with horror. Eat one of my fists. Li Kian Chang heavily smashed his fist that was covered with thunder force at Long Chen's back. But Li Kian Chang was shocked to see that when his full force punch landed on Long Chen's body, all he did was tremble ever so slightly, not even needing to take a single step. He slowly turned his head to look at the shocked Li Kian Chang, raising his bone blade. You can also eat one of my blades. His blade whistled over at Li Kian Chang. As that blade slashed down, Li Kian Chang felt as if space had solidified around him. He smelled the scent of death coming for him. Thunder shield. Light shined from Li Kian Chang's body and he raised his two fists in front of him. Countless strands of thunder force twined around him, forming a huge shield of thunder force. Boom. When the bone blade landed on that thunder force shield, the immense power caused the land to tremble. A wave of dirt surging out. Li Kian Chang's thunder force shield collapsed. The ground beneath him had caved in, and he was extremely shocked, his internal organs shaking. He was about to retreat when he felt a sharp pain from his stomach. Long Chen's foot had already fiercely stamped down on his stomach. Li Kian Chang was no longer able to endure any longer, vomiting out blood before being sent flying. Everyone was completely horrified by Long Chen. Just what level of monster was he? What had happened in the rubble wasteland for him to have become so strong? That first attack when he had defeated that core disciple was still understandable since that core disciple had been careless. But now Qishin and Lai Qianchang had fought with their full force and were still defeated by Long Chen in one blow each. Looking at Lai Qianchang who was still vomiting blood, no one could believe their eyes. Elder Sun's pupils contracted. That was because he saw that Long Chen had yet to even use his cultivation base. All that had been from just his physical strength. Furthermore, he had previously received one of Lai Kian Chang's fist without having any injury. One part of that was because of the golden horned python skin he was wearing. But more importantly, it was because Long Chen's physical body was exceptionally abnormal, comparable to a third-ranked magical beast. Just what did that brat encounter in the rubble wasteland? How did he become so strong? A bit of worry appeared in his eyes. Long Chen's growth rate was too fast. As Long Chen grew stronger, his own chance of obtaining his secrets grew slimmer. He had to think of something fast. After sending Lai Kian Chang flying, Long Chen once more began to slowly walk over to them. I've already said that those who have a debt to me will have to pay back both that debt and its interest. With your sinister schemes, you caused my brothers to bleed and caused my beauty to cry. Did you think that would just stay in the past? With each step he took, Long Chen's murderous aura grew stronger. At the end, his surging murderous aura had practically turned solid. The current Long Chen really was like a death god about to punish them for their sins. That bone blade would have to be his death god sickle. Bastard. Don't get so arrogant. Qishin and Lai Kian Chang both roared. Huge blades appearing in their hands and slashing down on Long Chen. Long Chen waved out his bone blade. Boom. Qishin and Lai Kian Chang's blades were completely shattered. In front of that bone blade, their own blades were weak as glass. Those were powerful weapons condensed from their spiritual key with the support of their runic power. And yet, they were absolutely powerless in front of Long Chen's bone blade. A single collision would cause them to break. One reason was because Long Chen's own power was so exceptional. But the other reason was that that bone blade was the tooth of a fourth-rank magical beast. And it was definitely the hardest weapon present. Back when Long Chen had found this tooth, he had almost passed out from joy. He had precisely been lacking such a hard weapon. It had required a week's time for him to grind down this tooth to form a handle for him. Within the rubble wasteland, he had run into countless dangers, but he had relied on this bone blade to force his way through them all. The only regretful thing was that although this bone blade was incomparably hard, it was too light. But that flaw didn't stop it from being Long Chen's new favorite weapon. With this kind of powerful weapon, 
Long Chen wouldn't have to fight barehanded against his opponents again. He could properly bring out the full potential of his body. As for Qixin and Lai Kai and Shang, they continued to frantically fight back. But Long Chen just continued to use the same move over and over. The instant their weapons would collide with his bone blade, they would immediately shatter. That would require them to condense a new one, which exhausted a terrifying amount of spiritual ki. That was especially true considering how frequently they exchanged blows. In just a couple breaths, they had struck out over ten times, causing their spiritual ki to be exhausted. Even their faces were turning pale. Looking at that incense stick, the two of them cursed. Normally it burned so fast. So why did it burn so slowly today? It's about time to end this. Long Chen's expression was solemn as he raised his bone blade into the air. An unstoppable aura surged out of him. Chapter 209 Revenging Enmity Translator Born to be feeling that unstoppable aura, both Lai Kian Chang and Qi Xin's expressions were completely shocked. They felt their bodies tighten as they were actually locked in place. That was not the effect of a battle skill, but simply Long Chen's aura. It was incredibly shocking to them that he could as use blood condensation aura to lock the two of them in place. Long Chen's bone blade ruthlessly slashed down. They were unable to dodge anymore, and so they could only take it head on. Both Qixin and Lai Kian Chang shouted, releasing all their energy to block that attack. Boom. The ground split apart and dust filled the air. Two wretched figures flew through the air, constantly vomiting blood. But before they had even touched the ground, another figure had already appeared in front of them. A huge bone blade once more slashing down. What? Lai Kian Chang and Qixin were horrified. Not imagining Long Chen would attack so quickly after his previous attack. That previous attack had already given them grave injuries. But now a second strike had come before they had even stabilized. Neither of them even had the chance to set up any defense. The bone blade smashed into the two of them. Immediately sending them flying. The bone blade might be hard. But luckily for them. It wasn't at all sharp. If it had been a sharp blade. Both of them would have been cut into halves. But even so. Long Chen's bone blade had directly broken quite a few of their bones. The spot Long Chen had sent them was towards the Heaven Earth faction. Everyone let out a startled cry when they saw those two figures flying over. The two of them fell in front of them, their bodies already somewhat deformed. That stunned all of them. Were these really core disciples? How come in front of Long Chen they seemed as weak as rabbits? Hey, what are you waiting for? Don't you remember the torment they put you through? If you aren't going to take revenge now. When else would you? Long Chen shouted out to those stunned people. People were first too stunned to react. But then one person charged out and stamped his foot onto Lai Kian Chang's face. Fuck your mom. Last time you beat me so badly. I bet you never thought there'd be this day. Lai Kian Chang had already had his bones broken by Long Chen. And even his internal organs had been gravely damaged. Before he could ever understand what was happening. He was sent tumbling through the air by a kick from that person. Having sent Lai Kian Chang with a single kick, that person laughed loudly. His suppressed anger was finally being released. You're asking for it. Lai Kian Chang glared furiously at that person. You dare glare at me? Go fuck yourself. Seeing that Lai Kian Chang still cursed at them, over ten others all charged over to beat him. Last time he had charged into the Heaven Earth faction on his own and given almost everyone at least a couple broken bones, completely humiliating them. Now that there was an opportunity to get revenge, they swarmed over him, pummeling both Lai Kian Chang and Qi Xin. The two of them were heavily wounded, and Long Chen had already exhausted their spiritual key. They were completely powerless against these outer disciples who they ordinarily could have defeated with a swat of their hand. Brothers, release all the suffering and humiliation you've had to endure. You don't need to bother with the flags. Repay them ten times the humiliation they've made you suffer. Beat them to death for me. Ah wait. At least leave them with a breath. Long Chen remembered not to kill them at that last moment. Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu's people swarmed over and crazily began to beat the two of them. As for the opposing alliance, they were still dumbfounded by Long Chen's strength. Other than the core disciples who were still fighting, the others were horrified, unsure whether they should charge forward or directly flee. Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu's people crazily released all the anger they had been suppressed within them. But even in their fury, they still didn't forget themselves entirely. No one hit any vital points. And so most of their beatings ended up on their limbs in order to avoid killing them. Even Guo Ran had come to viciously stamp his feet a couple times. However, he was then pulled out of the way by others. His flag case got in too many people's way. As for the first core disciple Long Chen had beat, 
He saw what was happening to the two of them and blessed his luck. Although Long Chen's attack had been strong, he still was able to fight. But now he acted too weak to get up. That might be a bit embarrassing, but it was much better than the fates of Lai Qianchang and Qixin. Thinking about it for a moment, he just directly collapsed and pretended to have fainted. What was happening over here gave Gu Yang a shock. And while he wanted to go help, Tang Wanner and Ye's Hickey refused to let him get by. Although it was impossible for the two of them to defeat Chiring him, they had more than enough power to block him temporarily. A surge of morale filled them when they saw Long Chen's amazing power. Long Chen, I'll kill you. Gu Yang roared furiously. All his tattooed runes lit up and his aura exploded. Lai Qianchang and Qixin were his allies, his left and right hands. Their disgrace was a humiliation for himself. If he couldn't reverse the situation, his fame would be tarnished. He no longer reserved anything. Exploding out with his full forces he punched Tang Wanner. Tang Wanner's wind blades were destroyed by that powerful punch. And there was still enough force behind his fist for him to ruthlessly arrive right in front of her face. Ice Crystal Shield. A huge ice wall appeared in front of Tang Wanner, blocking Gu Yang's fist. It also shattered when it met Gu Yang's fist. In just that brief moment, Tang Wanner had already withdrew enough to once more summon her wind blades, sending them out to attack him. Both of them were actually shocked at how powerful Gu Yang really was. This was the first time he had fought with such strength. The two of them pulled out all their power to block him, not letting him pass. Victory or defeaturing will be decided by whether they could hold him back. That was because Long Chen had already achieved an absolute superiority on his side. As long as they could hold on, victory would be theirs. But the current Gu Yang was now like a crazy lion, constantly raining sharp attacks on them. Their wind and ice blades were constantly being destroyed, and it took everything they had to hold him back. Long Chen looked at the incense stick and saw that everything had occurred too quickly. It had only burnt down to the halfway mark. Seeing that Song Mingyuan's side was also doing fine, he decided to directly charge into the opposing alliance, aiming for one of the flag bearers. Stop him. That flag bearer was horrified and hastily shouted at everyone to protect him while he fled. Unfortunately, he had really overestimated his comrades. After seeing two powerful experts like Lai Qianchang and Qixin be defeated so easily, none of them had any hope of stopping such a monster. That flag bearer shout actually immediately caused everyone to flee away from him, leaving only him standing in his original position. That flag bearer was struck dumb, quiveringly looking at Long Chen with fear. Senior Long, please don't hit me. I'll hand over the flags. That person wasn't stupid. Seeing everyone had left him, how could he possibly face off against Long Chen? And now that everyone had fled, it wasn't like they could blame him for handing over the flags. In any case, it wasn't as if their core disciples could drive all of them out of their factions. They were all elite disciples, the best they could obtain. Long Chen was expressionless as he grabbed that person. Frightened out of his mind, that person babbled. Please spare me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. The first thing that had popped into his mind wasn't that he would be defeated, but that he would be killed. That was because that scene of Long Chen killing those traitors was forever imprinted in his mind. Ah, that person let out a startled cry as he suddenly was thrown into the air by Long Chen. He tumbled a couple times and crawled up, realizing he was in front of the stunned Guo Ran. That personally celebrated that he hadn't been killed and respectfully held out his flags to Guo Ran. Guo Ran was delighted. Who would have thought that someone would just hand over the flags to him like this? But he was just about to take them when he suddenly remembered what Long Chen had told him at the beginning. His expression changed and he raged. What kind of attitude is this? Kneel and raise them above your head in offering. Did you never learn any manners? You tormented us for that long. Not crushing all your bones is already enough restraint on our parts. Do you believe me when I say I'll call all my brothers over and beat your head into a completely new shape? That person turned to look at the people fiendishly glaring at him and sighed. He went down on his knees and raised the flags high above his head. Please kindly accept my offering. Guo Ran's smile really was about to start blooming flowers now. After so much suffering, he had finally managed to release some of it back on his oppressors. He reached out and grabbed the flags, pretending to be indifferent. Okay, you can fuck off now. Remember, next time you have to take the initiative to bring them over on your own. Understood. I understand. I understand. I'll fuck off now. That person hastily fled back to his own faction. He was already rejoicing that he hadn't been beat up. At the same time he had a thought to withdraw from his faction. This competition really was too terrifying. He actually thought it'd be better to just be a factionless outer disciple. 
Once that person left, there were others who flew over to take his place. However some of them possessed some more courage. To those people, Guo Ran extremely bluntly called over his brothers to give them a very nice fist and feet massage. Long Chen snatched all of their flags on his own. He sneered. This is what they got for not having any trust in each other. Without trust, how would they possess any military power? They would just be a bunch of scattered sand. They'd be fine if nothing happened. But as soon as they met a true threat, they all just looked after themselves. That was also why Long Chen hated those traitors so much. They had betrayed other people's trust. If they had instead been in a real fight, they would have caused everyone to die. Long Chen, I'll kill you. Once Long Chen had stolen all their flags, Tang Wanner and Ye Hikia were finally unable to hold back Gu Yang. He shot forward like an infuriated lion, his eyes spitting flames as he smashed his fist at Long Chen. Chapter 210 Ancestral Blood Support Translator Born to be the current Gu Yang really had gone berserk. Lai Kai and Chang and Qishin had been beaten to the point where they couldn't even crawl with imprints of people's souls still visible on their faces. Of the other core disciples, three of them had been entangled with Song Mingyuan's group of three, while the other one was lying on the ground, appearing almost dead. Their alliance of seven factions had all had their flags stolen, all because of Long Chen. By this point, the incense stick was quickly reaching its end. If he still didn't steal back those flags at this point, their seven faction alliance would end up last. Careful Long Chen, Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikia were not able to stop Gu Yang any longer. His control over his ancestral mark far surpassed their own, causing them to be at too great of a disadvantage. Long Chen smiled and gave Tang Wanner a reassuring gesture. He then focused on the furiously charging Gu Yang. A flare of anger arose within him. That bastard had always been provoking him, saying that he would crush him into pulp over and over again. Although Long Chen had long since wanted to beat him up, he had always been too weak. But now that he had reached the tenth heaven stage of blood condensation and he had this powerful bone blade, he was no longer worried. Slashing his blade at him, Gu Yang roared and all the runes on his body lit up. Runic power flared over his fist as his punch smashed into the bone blade. Boom. The land shook from their intense collision. Their attacks had actually been completely equal. Under Gu Yang's punch, Long Chen's bone blade was blown back. Long Chen borrowed that force to spin, his bone blade cutting a huge arc as it sliced back towards Gu Yang's waist. As for Gu Yang, although he had managed to block Long Chen's attack, he had still received a bit of a jolt and was forced back a step. That shocked Gu Yang, as Long Chen's attack was even stronger than Tang Wan'er's wind blades. But while he was still shocked, Long Chen's bone blade had already spun in a crafty angle and was slicing towards him. He was given a fright and went to block. But Long Chen's angle of attack was extremely tricky, making it awkward for him to block it. He was unable to use any force in that position. That caused him to suffer greatly and he was sent flying. It wasn't that Long Chen had struck with too much power, but simply that his attack was too unorthodox for him. Gu Yang quickly stabilized himself in midair. He was extremely powerful and had plentiful combat experience. As long as his foot touched the ground, he would be able to once more take the initiative and attack. Unfortunately for him, the instant his foot was about to touch the ground, Long Chen's bone blade had already viciously slashed out. Gu Yang was both startled and infuriated. In these three consecutive blows from Long Chen, he hadn't had the slightest chance to take a breath, causing him to be at a disadvantage. Although he blocked this attack again, he immediately lost control over his center of gravity and was sent tumbling through the air. He only managed to stop again after dozens of meters, appearing extremely pathetic. The entire crowd was silent. Everyone knew just how powerful Gu Yang was. He had long since been acclaimed as the number one figure of the monastery's new generation. But even he was unable to receive more than three blows from Long Chen before being sent flying. Some people even wondered if they had taken a blow to the head and were hallucinating. The person who had made Gu Yang powerless to retaliate was actually the one with the lowest cultivation base in the entire monastery. Lazily resting his bone blade on his shoulder. Long Chen sneered at Gu Yang. Didn't you personally say many times that if I blocked your path you'd crush me to pulp? Now I have no choice but to doubt your words. Long Chen's voice was calm without the slightest bit of anger. And yet it was precisely this calm slap in his face that made Gu Yang even more infuriated. In Gu Yang's eyes, Long Chen had always been a minor character. He had never cared about him at all. But now he was completely humiliated by this minor character. Just now he had been too careless. And that was the only reason why Long Chen was able to turn his movements into a mess. 
and now he was using his mistake to insult him. Gu Yang roared and shot forward at Long Chen, punching out. Long Chen sneered and raised his bone blade, slashing it directly onto Gu Yang's bald head. How could it be possible for Gu Yang's fist to reach Long Chen before his bone blade reached him? Long Chen couldn't be bothered to fight with him head on. Rather than striking his fist, Long Chen wanted to test how hard that shiny head of his was. Seeing Long Chen actually ignore his fist and aim at his head, Gu Yang was given a fright and hastily raised his fists to block. But his movements were too hurried and he was unable to release his full strength. He was again forced back by Long Chen's bone blade. He was only just about to restabilize when Long Chen's blade had appeared in front of him again. And so Gu Yang's tragedy once more repeated itself. Before his feet could touch the ground, Long Chen's blade sent him flying once more. Other than the first move being a bit different, the next two attacks were exactly the same as before. It was even the exact same angle and power. Most dumbfounding of all was that the miserable posture Gu Yang was sent tumbling through the air was exactly the same as the first time. Lazily resting his bone blade on his shoulder, he once more sneered to Gu Yang. Didn't you personally say many times that if I blocked your path you'd crush me to pulp? Now I have no choice but to doubt your words. It was the exact same movement, the exact same expression, and the exact same phrase. Completely infuriating and insulting Gu Yang. Gu Yang sinisterly said, Long Chen, you dare to humiliate me. Long Chen actually laughed. Ha ha ha, who cares if I humiliate you? Aren't you someone who regularly humiliates others? What? Someone humiliates you once and you can't handle it? You really are a marvel. Can it be that despite being bald, you don't allow others to call you baldy? What goes around comes around. Since you like to humiliate others, then you have to be ready to be humiliated by others. Long Chen detested these geniuses like Gu Yang who had been pampered by their families to the point where they thought themselves to be emperors. It was like they expected others to just kneel in front of them automatically. These geniuses treated humiliating others as just a regular part of their lives, a habit that had already been ingrained in their bones. But when someone else humiliated them, it was like they had committed some kind of heavenly crime. Long Chen, you've really infuriated me. Gu Yang sinisterly glared at him, his gaze filled with killing intent. So what? If you get depressed over it, go over to Elder Sun with the large bell. Just smash your own head onto it and death will solve all your problems. Plus you'll even get to hear such a nice bell sound in your final moments. It can count as having a good death. Long Chen pointed to the side. Gu Yang couldn't stop himself from taking this provocation. He felt even his lungs might explode from anger. He roared. His runes lighting up and now shockingly beginning to tremble. His runes seemed to come to life. Moving slowly along his skin. He can activate his ancestral blood support. Both Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikia were the most shocked. They had never thought Gu Yang's control over his ancestral mark had reached such a level. Gu Yang had not only awakened his ancestral mark, but he had a perfect connection to his ancestral mark's power that allowed him to activate his ancestral blood for further strength. Activating the ancestral blood support was a kind of secret technique. Someone with an ancestral bloodline could ignite a portion of their essence blood to multiply their strength for a short period of time. Gu Yang is actually so powerful. Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu looked at each other in dismay, seeing the other person's disbelief. Long Chen, I'll kill you. Gu Yang's runes moved over every inch of his body. From a distance, it looked as if countless insects had crawled over his body, causing anyone who saw it to feel terrified. Gu Yang's aura had exploded out to a shocking level, to the point where even those senior apprentice brothers who were watching could sense the pressure. This Gu Yang really is a monster, exclaimed one of the law enforcers. Although they had also once been new disciples, their generation's core disciples had definitely not been that terrifying. There hadn't even been a single genius who had awakened their ancestral mark in that generation, let alone a monster as terrifying as Gu Yang. Everyone was now completely focused on the two of them. Long Chen's return had completely reversed the state of the faction competition, but now that Gu Yang had finally erupted out with his greatest strength, it still wasn't sure just what the final result would be. Long Chen, we'll help you. Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu both walked up to Long Chen, taking a stance to fight against Gu Yang with him. That was naturally because the two of them had the greatest understanding of just how terrifying Gu Yang was. Only with all three of them together was there a chance of victory. But Long Chen smiled at them and betrayed both their expectations. No need. Some things have to be done personally. For example, revenge. Seeing Long Chen's seriousness. Tang Wan'er immediately understood what Long Chen was thinking. 
Long Chen was planning on returning all the humiliation that everyone in the Heaven Earth faction had had to suffer. Although she was still a bit worried, she still nodded in the end and took a couple steps back. Long Chen might normally be a mischievous rascal without the slightest air of arrogance, but that was because his unyielding arrogance was buried deep within his bones. A man didn't necessarily need to possess an air of arrogance, but he needed to have an unyielding pride within him. Long Chen was precisely like that. He was now completely infuriated with Gu Yang, Qi Xin, and Lai Qianchang's despicable schemes. Although Long Chen had never said it to anyone, he had remembered all that enmity within him. So what he wanted right now was just one thing, revenge. Ye Hikyu stared at Long Chen and also withdrew. Long Chen was the only one remaining to face Gu Yang, that figure that wasn't overly tall or large, but he was filled with a domineering disdain for all, an existence nothing within heaven and earth could stop. That kind of profound arrogance was something that didn't even place heaven and earth within its gaze, one that would tear apart the very dome of the sky. Space trembled as Gu Yang's runes finally stopped moving. However, his current aura had already advanced to a terrifying realm. Long Chen, since I said I'd crush you to pulp, I definitely will. Gu Yang with his ancestral blood support was completely terrifying. His voice was hoarse like scraping iron, and his face was completely sinister. Die. Gu Yang roared and stamped on the ground. The entire land shook as he charged at Long Chen. Chapter 211 Fighting Gu Yang Translator Born to be die. Gu Yang roared and stamped on the ground. The entire land shook as he charged at Long Chen. His power was so great that people could see shock waves flying off him as he passed by. That was a sign his power had reached a definite pinnacle. Long Chen took a deep breath. Gu Yang's power had already surpassed his expectations. He couldn't afford to hold back any longer. Space buzzed as his huge divine ring appeared behind him. A terrifying wave of ki soared into the air. The divine ring's appearance was causing constant shocks within the air. Space had already become unstable. Almost everyone present had already seen Long Chen summon his divine ring before. But this time his divine ring was even more powerful and terrifying than before. A heaven-shaking roar came from Long Chen as his bone blade slashed down on Gu Yang. When Long Chen's bone blade and Gu Yang's fist collided, an immense explosion rang out. A terrifying wave of power split the ground, sending the earth rolling out. Not good. Everyone hastily raised their defenses. Those who were closer hadn't even had time to circulate their key to protect themselves and were sent flying by that wave. Hundreds of people began to cough up blood as they were sent flying, their eyes filled with horror. Just the aftershocks of their battle were able to cause such injuries to them. If they were actually fighting against them, they would have definitely died. It was too terrifying. Broken fragments of stone shot through the air. The ground surged as if it had turned liquid and a wave was rolling through it, only fading once it was far off into the distance. Boom boom boom. The crowd was no longer even able to see the two of them. They could only see the ground being blown into the air and shooting rocks. Intense collisions continuously rang out, the ground shaking along with it Novaloon.com how terrifying. Even Song Mingguan and the others had paused by now. That was because now their battles were all meaningless. The ending was already set in stone. No matter how strong Gu Yang was, there was no way he could defy Turing Long Chen, Tang Wan or and Ye's Hikyu if they fought together. Now that Long Chen was fighting Gu Yang on his own, that meant this faction competition had already lost all its meaning. Right now Long Chen wasn't fighting for victory, but revenge. Everyone retreated to watch from a distance. From there they could only vaguely see two figures constantly attacking the other. That was an absolutely fierce battle. The disciples from the Heaven Earth faction watched on excitedly. They all knew that now that Long Chen had returned, the Heaven Earth faction would definitely soar to the peak. No one would be able to stop them. There was already two experts who had awakened their ancestral marks in their alliance. Now that Long Chen, a genius that had already surpassed the monster level classification, was back, it would be impossible for them to not soar. Boom. Finally with another intense collision, one person was sent flying back dozens of meters before stabilizing. It's Gu Yang. He was forced back. People let out startled cries as they saw that as soon as Gu Yang was forced back, Long Chen had already charged over with his bone blade. The current Long Chen was just like a wild dragon, brandishing his bone blade ruthlessly. He forced Gu Yang to retreat over and over again. Gu Yang is about to be defeated. He's actually weaker than Long Chen even in terms of pure power, exclaimed one person. Gu Yang's most powerful forte was his brute power. When that brute power was added on to the power of his ancestral blood support, 
His fist could easily even destroy Tang Wan'er's wind blades. It was obvious how frightening such a thing was. But even such a powerful genius who used brute power to suppress all others was actually losing despite Long Chen fighting him head on. HMPH. That's just because Long Chen is relying on his weapon. If Long Chen also dared fight barefisted, senior brother Gu Yang would crush him to death with a single punch. I silly said one person from Gu Yang's faction. Although they were no longer fighting, everyone was still standing at the edges glaring at the other party, ready to fight at any moment. TCH. Weapons are also a kind of strength. Your logic is just a fart. According to that, then Gu Yang also shouldn't have used his ancestral blood support. If so, then senior brother Long Chen would have crushed his bald head easily, loudly retorted a disciple from the Heaven Earth faction. What crap? His ancestral mark is his innate talent, a sign of his strength. Why wouldn't he use it? Raged the first person to speak out. Someone from the Heaven Earth faction's side immediately cursed. Senior brother Long Chen's bone blade is something he obtained from the graveyard of the exiled. That's a symbol of his glory. So why shouldn't he use it? That's just Long Chen's dog sheet luck. All he did was find a treasure. Otherwise he would have been turned into magical beast crap. That person's words immediately ignited everyone on this side's fury. Before this, the two figures they cared about the most would have to be the two goddesses Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu. But now Long Chen had become another one of their idols. Their worship of him was not at all inferior to their worship of the two goddesses. They would not allow anyone to insult them. One person immediately charged out and punched that person right in the nose. Who the fuck asked you to be so blind? That person's bones broke and he let out a miserable shriek. But even after that punch, that disciple of the Heaven Earth faction still hadn't released enough of his fury. He shouted to his allies. Brothers, they dare insult senior brother Long Chen like this. That's completely intolerable. Do you still remember how they bullied us? Right now we don't need to fight over flags. But let us men all fight together to relieve our resentment. Following that person's shout. All five factions in the Heaven Earth Faction's alliance charged forward. Other than the flag bearers, every single disciple was like an angry bull. Previously none of them had really fought since Long Chen had suppressed all the enemies on his own to the point that they hadn't even dared to resist. So much of their anger had already been relieved. However, they still didn't find it to be that satisfying enough. Now that someone had insulted Long Chen, they finally had an excuse to beat them. Amongst cultivators. There were few who weren't battle fanatics. With one person taking the lead, they all exploded, charging at their opponents. A huge fight immediately erupted between both parties. As for Song Mingyuan and the other core disciples, seeing that they couldn't participate in Long Chen's battle, they all began to fight their opponents once more. Explosions continuously rang out from Long Chen's side. Key waves continuously shook the land, but this side also wasn't at all inferior either. Victory was already assured with the flags. With Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu there, no one could even think about snatching their flags. So everyone could just ignore their flags and fight only for themselves. On the other side was one core disciple faking that he was injured as well as Lai Kianchang and Qishin who had long since been beaten to the point of near death. Their morale was already near rock bottom. Then adding on that Gu Yang's alliance didn't even want to fight at this point. They were all beaten like stray dogs, wailing and crying. The distant Ling Yunzi who was observing sighed. The trash really is intermingled with the good. In this generation of disciples, the strong really were much stronger than before, but the weak were also so weak. Most importantly, their actual temperaments were far too lacking. Even that previous life and death trial still hadn't caused them to mature. Long Chen's side was all full of vigor with firm determination. Even though they had had to suffer much humiliation before, not one of them had withdrawn from their faction. In comparison, Everyone on Gu Yang's side was already frightened to the point that they didn't dare fight. Their flags had been directly exposed to the enemy without a single person guarding. At that time Tu Fang had turned green, wanting to smack those idiots to death. If that had been a real fight against experts of the corrupt path, not one of them would have survived. He really did well to kill them. Tu Fang grit his teeth. He was talking about those traitors who Long Chen had killed at the beginning. Only with trust and mutual protection could a squad truly become powerful. And it was precisely because of that absolute trust that betrayal hurt so much. In fact, if it happened again, Tu Fang wished he could turn Long Chen's punishment into a reward. This clearly proved Long Chen had been right to act as he had. Gu Yang's alliance had been completely broken down by their own selfishness. Without any care of their comrades, they were blown apart like a pile of loose sand. We really have let Long Chen down. 
We should have rewarded him for doing as he had instead of punishing him. Sai Tu Fang. Ling Yunzi smiled. Here you go again. Divergents have their own paths that no one can change. And furthermore, do you really think it was a punishment for Long Chen to be exiled to the rubble wasteland? When he said that, Tu Fang immediately realized that after being exiled there, Long Chen had actually become many times stronger. Then did that mean that was all fated to be? Thinking of that, Tu Fang shut his mouth. His reverence for the heavenly Deos deepened even further. Elder Sun was filled with greed as he looked at the divine ring behind Long Chen's back. Currently he had reached a bottleneck in his cultivation. If he could obtain Long Chen's miraculous technique, there really might be a chance of him breaking through. That was because Long Chen's divine ring could crazily absorb energy from the world. If he could obtain it, then by using it while he attacked the barrier between realms, he would have that little extra push that would let him break through. When advancing, it was precisely just that little bit of strength that was always lacking. It might seem like just a little bit, but it really was like a heavenly chasm that you might never be able to cross in your lifetime. Boom. With another explosive sound, Long Chen's bone blade sent Gu Yang flying again. Bastard. I refuse to believe this. My strength is the greatest Gu Yang furiously roared. Once more charging at Long Chen. His fists flying crazily. But you have yet to crush me to pulp. I silly replied Long Chen. Once more brandishing his bone blade. He forced Gu Yang back. With this bone blade. He was finally able to properly bring out more of his force. Which pleased him greatly. He wasn't the same as Gu Yang who could use his ancestral blood support to strengthen his fists to the point that they were as hard as weapons. Furthermore, he had never learned any high-class bare-handed fighting techniques. So only by wielding a weapon could he release his full potential. This time he was able to fight to his heart's content, giving Long Chen an unprecedented feeling of delight. But Long Chen really was shocked at how powerful Gu Yang was. Even with his divine ring as support, fighting at his full force was still greatly exhausting. Having reached the 10th Heaven stage, his power had increased greatly, but his rate of exhaustion had also increased. But as for Gu Yang, even after fighting this long, his strength had yet to decline in the slightest. If this continued, he really might end up running out of spiritual key first. Stealthily glancing above, he saw that the incense stick was almost completely burnt out. Boom. Gu Yang drew back again, grinding his teeth. He was unable to accept such a result. With my final blow I'll smash you to pulp. Gu Yang shouted and the countless runes on his fists disappeared. His fists instead turned black, almost appearing like steel. I'll let you taste my Gu family's Yang flame fist. A powerful aura that immediately locked Long Chen in place. Space trembled as his fist cut across the space, smashing at Long Chen. Chapter 212 Your fist isn't strong enough translator. Born to be when Gu Yang's fist formed, his face turned pale as paper. But despite that, his expression was still as sinister as ever. That fist now contained his entire strength and energy, including an overdraft of part of his ancestral mark power. You want to finish this in one move? Come. Long Chen raised his bone blade, his Feng Fu star circulating. All his spiritual key injected into his bone blade. Split the heavens. Long Chen shouted inside and his bone blade began to rumble. It was almost possible to hear the roar of a tiger emanating from it as it slashed down on Gu Yang. When that fist and blade met, heaven and earth seemed to lose all sound. A brilliant flare of light immediately exploded out. Boom. The void appeared to shatter. Key waves surged everywhere, immediately engulfing an area of dozens of miles. An immense crater was smashed into the ground, and the distant spectators had practically been buried alive. When some people managed to dig their way to see what had happened, they were completely speechless. Dong. At this moment the bell rang out, signaling the end of the faction competition. But whether it was the winners or the losers, none of them cheered or made any sound. They just blankly stared at that crater. At the bottom was a completely pale Long Chen. He was gasping for breath. Opposite to Long Chen was Gu Yang. He was lying on the ground, blood flowing from the corner of his mouth. He was filled with disbelief. One of his arms had been broken in several places, bending in extremely odd ways. If you want to crush me, Long Chen, to pulp, then your fist isn't strong enough. Long Chen shook his head lightly. Gu Yang's expression became even uglier. But as he opened his mouth to retort, he suddenly vomited out blood and fainted. In that last attack Long Chen had pushed split the heavens to his max, causing its power to reach a kind of pinnacle. For Gu Yang to be able to survive such an attack already showed how incredibly terrifying he was. But despite how strong his physical body was, he was still heavily injured. At the same time, 
Long Chen realized that as his cultivation base increased, Split the Heaven's power also rose with it, becoming increasingly terrifying. He still had no idea what class of battle skill it was, but this definitely confirmed its class was shockingly high. Once Gu Yang fainted, Long Chen smiled. A bit of that suppressed anger inside him had finally been relieved. He was about to put away his bone blade when he suddenly felt the world spinning around him. A pair of soft hands gently supported him. A faint fragrance floated into Long Chen's nose, filling him with warmth. Exhaustion beat him and he passed out. Looking at the passed out Long Chen, Tang Wanner's heart ached. For him to have returned from the graveyard of the exiled, he had probably met countless dangers, more dangers than another person would see in their entire lifetime. Wood, we won. Cheers rang out as people from her side began to crazily shout, showing off their excitement. Tang Wanner lightly rubbed Long Chen's cheek. There was a bit of dirt as well as some stubble now, but those things actually set off Long Chen's resoluteness. In the past two months, it seemed Long Chen had once more matured a great deal. This scoundrel, no matter how much bitterness he goes through, he never tells anyone. Tang Wanner's tears dripped down. Ye's Hikia walked over and gently patted her shoulder. Let's go back. Long Chen needs to rest. She nodded. At this point a bunch of other people also came over with a stretcher, bringing Long Chen away. The others who had been injured were waiting to be healed. But Tang Wanner had examined Long Chen's body and seen that he had simply run out of spiritual ki and was exhausted. He wasn't actually injured, and so she directly brought him back. Once they left, the healing hall's disciples came out to heal everyone. However, Gu Yang, Lai Kai and Shang, and Qi Xin's wounds were extremely severe. That was especially true of Lai Kai and Shang and Qi Xin. Their bones had been trampled on and they had been beaten to the point of near death. They had done too many wicked things up to this point and that was their retribution. Those disciples who hadn't been able to fight back against them before had taken this chance to beat them without holding anything back. That seed of hatred had long since been planted. But that seed really had matured too quickly. In just one month, they had taken their vengeance. If it hadn't been for Long Chen giving everyone a reminder, perhaps some people really might have been lost their reasoning within their fury and beat the two of them to death. But although no one had done that, those fellows had not been kind at all. They avoided vital spots, but they also made it so that they wouldn't pass out, causing them to see and suffer all their beatings without being able to do anything. Seeing the two of them want to cough up blood from their rage, everyone's felt much more free and relieved. Due to their heavy injuries, Lai Kai and Chang and Qishin were sent directly back to the healing hall for some senior disciples to heal. But even their senior disciples would probably require over a week to let them be able to walk out. The rankings were already announced. The Heaven Earth Factions Alliance took the top five spots. The other rankings were left to Guan Wenan and them. As for who was what exact rank, that would be up to them to decide. Guan Wenan looked at all this with a complicated look. Seeing the Heaven Earth Faction led their people away, he also brought his people away. Other than the heavily injured being sent to the healing hall, the others would all be fine after just one or two days of recovery. When everyone had scattered, a large group of people came over. That group was those people who had decided to stay behind despite failing the disciple trials. They were not disciples of the monastery. They could only count as some workers and could only receive a meager amount of resources. And yet they had no complaints. That was because they had seen an even broader world after coming to the monastery. It was at such a place that they could temper themselves. Seeing that group of people busily cleaning, Ling Yunzi frowned slightly seeming to think of some distant memories. Long Chen's last attack seemed somewhat familiar, but I actually can't remember where I've seen it before. Perhaps I've just heard about it somewhere. Ling Yunzi muttered to himself, that attack is extremely frightening, but I have a strange feeling that Long Chen is unable to completely wield its entire strength. According to normal cultivation standards, a powerful battle skill cannot be used without a powerful cultivation base. It isn't that you're unable to use it but simply that your meridians wouldn't be able to endure using it. But Long Chen's attack is still far from reaching that move's true power. It really is curious. Tu Fang also nodded. The two of them were the monastery's strongest experts. Ling Yunzi had even stepped into the legendary Xianchen realm, and yet he was still unable to see through the origins of Long Chen's attack. This time Long Chen slept very well. It really was excellent to sleep at home. After all, even with all his courage, he had been scared for almost every single second of the last two months. There was no way around it. In that kind of place, Long Chen was near the bottom of the food chain. A slight mistake would lead to death. In the past two months, 
he had never had a good night's sleep. Every day he had crazily increased his cultivation base, increasing the chance that he would be able to survive. He slept for a full three days before finally awakening, feeling completely full of energy and excitement. As soon as he walked out of his room, he saw King Yu and Tang Wan are cultivating. He immediately startled the two out of their meditation. Sorry to disturb you, apologized Long Chen. We weren't in a true meditative state. We've been waiting for you this whole time. Come, sit. Sister King Yu prepared a bunch of delicacies for you as a reward. Tang Wan er pulled Long Chen over, smiling brightly. Really? I didn't even know Sister King Yu could cook, exclaimed Long Chen. He, I bet you didn't know Sister King Yu's cooking skill can be praised as top class. She's never let anyone else know that. This time Sister King Yu only decided to cook for you as your reward, laughed Tang Wan Er. King Yu smiled and returned to the kitchen, or Long Chen supposed she had, since he had no idea where the kitchen even was in here. Tang Wan Er continued smiling and looking at Long Chen. She didn't say anything more. It seemed as if quietly looking at Long Chen was actually something quite enjoyable for her. Beauty Wan Er, if you look at me with any more adoration, I really will get embarrassed. Have you finally thought it over and decided to give your heart to me? Suddenly asked Long Chen. You wish. Tang Wan Er angrily hit Long Chen. When will you stop being so infuriatingly flippant? Other than when fighting and killing, it seemed this scoundrel never could be serious. Annoying Tang Wan Er endlessly. You wouldn't even be able to talk to him properly for more than a few seconds before he irritated you enough to want to beat him up. Then do you like it when I'm flippant or do you like me serious? Laughed Long Chen. Of course I like it when you, scoundrel, don't even bother with that. Who would ever like you? Tang Wan Er almost fell for it before cutting herself off. Looking at her light fury, for some reason Long Chen felt he really liked it when she was like that. Did that mean he was a bit abnormal? Just as Long Chen's was pondering over whether his own beauty standards had problems, King Yu returned. There were over a dozen piping hot dishes releasing a fragrance that made him drool. Long Chen's stomach rumbled loudly. Tang Wan Er and King Yu laughed. Long Chen explained with some embarrassment, other than magical beast meat, I didn't have anything else to eat in the last two months. For the first month it was alright, but then it really was starting to get disgusting. He, I finally get to eat something good. King Yu sighed. Long Chen, this time it really was hard on you. Once King Yu said that, Tang Wan Er's eyes turned red. Long Chen hastily said, what was so hard about it? It was just a little journey. Quick. Eat before I starve to death. Long Chen laughed and directly picked up a mouthful of food. Originally he was just planning on changing the subject. But the instant he tasted that food, his eyes immediately lit up. From that moment on, his chopsticks never left his hands and his mouth was never empty as he crazily stuffed himself. King Yu's cooking skill really was top notch. Furthermore she had also added in many vegetables to the dishes. Which made Long Chen who had constantly been eating meat to become like a ravenous wolf. Seeing Long Chen wildly devour his food, King Yu was delighted. She and Tang Wan Er ate together with him. After eating, Long Chen felt he really was unable to stuff anything more down. Even just opening his mouth, he felt his throat was still full of her delicious food. Long Chen belched and patted his stomach, completely satisfied. Suddenly he cast a vague glance at Tang Wan Er. Sister Wan Er, I've got something fun to do with you that you mentioned before. Long Chen smiled at Tang Wan Er mysteriously. Chapter 213 Lightning Refinement Translator Born to be Long Chen and Tang Wan Er requested a leave of absence from the monastery. They then left from the monastery's gate and began walking northwards. Disciples had to request for leaves of absence from an elder if they wished to go outside the monastery. Furthermore, they were not allowed to leave for too long. The two of them had put in seven days time. Long Chen, where are you bringing me? Tang Wan Er was still in the dark. Didn't I tell you? We're doing something fun laughed Long Chen. If you won't be serious with me I won't bother with you any longer, sniffed Tang Wan Er somewhat angrily. Haha, <laughs> don't get mad. I need you to help me out a bit for a certain something. But before that, I still need to go find Little Snow, explained Long Chen. Little Snow? You mean your Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf? Didn't you tell your family's people to bring him back? Asked Tang Wan Er. Long Chen smiled bitterly. I came by myself. I didn't have anyone from my family present. Only then did Tang Wan Er remember how Long Chen had traveled on his own. She awkwardly asked, Then where is Little Snow? Long Chen looked around. This is where we agreed to meet. Look, there's Little Snow's footprints. He should be around here somewhere. Suddenly Long Chen let out a long roar that shook the sky. 
His majestic roar immediately spread hundreds of miles. That roar echoed out for the time it took for an incense stick to burn before finally fading away. Long Chen was a bit baffled. Maybe Little Snow is hunting, he guessed. Then what do you want to do? You want us to wait? Asked Tang Wanur. No need. I'll tie one of my clothes onto a tree. He should be able to figure out I came here to find him. Once he sees my clothing he'll know to wait for me. Long Chen took off his outer shirt and tied it to a large tree. Little Snow's sensitive nose could easily find it. Once he did, he definitely know Long Chen had come by and he wait here for him. Tang Wanner asked, Then what do you want to do now? Haha, <laughs> I'm bringing you to do something fun. You'll definitely like it. Long Chen directly rushed off. Scoundrel, hurry up and tell me. Tang Wanner followed behind him angrily. This fellow really did like to act all mysterious. The two of them rushed over a thousand miles north, arriving at the top of a huge mountain. This mountain was extremely high, and above the peak were rolling black clouds. Flickers of lightning appeared every now and then. Looking at those black clouds above, Tang Wanner suddenly recalled something and her eyes widened. Long Chen, don't tell me you came here to be struck by lightning. He, you really are smart. Yup, you guessed right, laughed Long Chen. On his journey back from the rubble wasteland, he had passed by this region and seen that this place was a bit strange. The mountain peak would always be covered by black clouds with lightning within them. This entire mountain peak was completely bare. It was definitely a good place to gather lightning. He had once refined Lai Kian Chang's Thunder Force Seed. So his body already had a certain resistance to thunder and lightning. Furthermore, his meridians were able to contain Thunder Force. He hoped that if he could obtain a stronger Thunder Force, it might be possible for him to nourish and use that Thunder Force like his Beast Flame. Most importantly, having advanced to the 10th Heaven stage, Long Chen was very worried from his experience in advancing from the Key Condensation Realm. He had to be cautious. Once he reached the 13th Heaven stage, he would be struck by that Heavenly Punishment. The previous Heavenly Punishment had almost killed him. If it hadn't been for the Spirit World's expert giving him a warning, he wouldn't have been able to resist his terror and would have already died from that tribulation. Furthermore, she had told him that the first tribulation was only a test of his willpower. If that was true, then when he advanced to tendon transformation, it would definitely be even more terrifying. Just a test of willpower had almost turned him to ashes. If it was a test of his physical body, wouldn't he have been directly killed? Although his physical body was much more powerful now. He was still filled with fear and caution towards that heavenly punishment. The first time was already that terrifying. Just how horrifying would be the second time? He naturally didn't want to die under heavenly punishment, and so he had to make himself even stronger. Previously he had refined Lai Kian Chang's thunder seed, and so he had gained a control over some thunder force. So while coming here was still a risk, it was worth it. If he could absorb the thunder and lightning from the sky, he might be able to borrow that thunder force to temper his body, giving him greater resistance to lightning in the future. Even a slightly greater resistance would give him a higher chance of surviving the next heavenly punishment. Long Chen took out a large Kai 21 meters wide from his spatial ring. The frame was made from magical beast bone and then normal beast hide was added as cloth, making it very sturdy. You've flown a kite before, right? Asked Long Chen. I've flown a kite, but not a man kite. You can't really be serious. Although Long Chen could control a bit of thunder force, that had just come from a person, it was not at all the same as natural thunder force. Natural thunder force was at least thousands of times stronger. A mistake meant death. Gathering natural thunder force to use as his own was definitely a crazy idea. She had never even heard of anyone attempting such a thing. She had no confidence in this at all. But seeing how Long Chen was so prepared, it seemed he wasn't joking around. In Tang Wanner's eyes, Long Chen had never done anything normally. He always treated abnormal things as his normal. Long Chen took out a string made of black silk, tying it securely to his kite. He tested it a couple times before being reassured. After all, this matter definitely could end up killing him if he wasn't overly cautious. The string was over 3,000 meters long. Although it was only the thickness of a single finger, it would definitely not break. He then tied the other end of the string to a huge boulder. I'll get on top of the kite and tie myself onto it securely so I won't fall off. You let me fly into the sky, but always pay attention. When I'm about to be struck by the lightning, let go of the string. Although it doesn't conduct electricity, it's not an absolute insulator. If I end up passing out or something, you need to be ready to save me. Tang Wanner solemnly stared at Long Chen. 
her heart pounding out of her control. This is way too terrifying. You really shouldn't do this. To be honest, I'm terrified for you. Long Chen laughed. Don't worry, I'm not scared that you're terrified. This is extremely important to me. So please lend me your assistance. Tang Wan'er helplessly shook her head. She wondered to herself if she would also become crazy if she stayed with Long Chen for too long. I'll run with the kite, get lift off, and then jump on top of it. The rest will be up to you. Just treat it as having fun. Long Chen tried to ease her nervousness. Tang Wan'er glared at him. What about this was fun? If she made a mistake, he could die. Long Chen raised the large kite and began to run down the mountain. After a couple hundred meters, he had generated enough inertia and lift to finally slowly float upwards. Currently he was still extremely stable and secure. When Long Chen flipped to get on top of the kite, Tang Wan'er nervously pulled on the string. Her kite flying skills were definitely supreme, as with just a few tugs, the kite soared into the sky, flying levelly. Standing atop the kite, Long Chen gave Tang Wan'er a thumbs up. You really are awesome beauty Wan'er. Careful. Tang Wan'er suddenly let out a startled cry as a bolt of lightning directly crashed down on Long Chen. Bang. Long Chen's clothing burst apart, but he had already been prepared for that, and he was still wearing the golden horned python's leather skin so at least he wasn't naked. Currently the kite was still only 150 meters from the ground. He hadn't expected to already be struck by lightning while he was still so far from the clouds. The kite trembled, but the string Long Chen had tied to his waist hadn't broken. He coughed up some smoke and felt all his hair stand on end. Countless strands of lightning crawled over his body. He quickly attempted using his thunder force to absorb them, but the result was not as he had expected. Those lightning strands and his own thunder force repelled each other much harder than he had ever imagined, and they began to go berserk inside his body. How is it Long Chen? Tang Wan'er cried out when she saw Long Chen was completely motionless atop the kite. I'm fine. Just maintain this height and let me get used to it, shouted back Long Chen. He then continued attempting to refine the power of the lightning, but no matter how he tried, he was unable to refine it at all. It was as if Long Chen's original thunder force was water while this natural thunder force was oil. The two of them refused to mix. He tried a dozen times without succeeding, then gritting his teeth. He directly gave up on his original thunder force and began to try connecting to the natural thunder force. That thunder force had no will, but it was exceptionally berserk like lava. As Long Chen attempted to refine it, it wildly attacked Long Chen's spirit. Damn this thing. He had tried refining it and had failed. Now he tried connecting to it, and failed. Long Chen now directly used the most berserk method, using his spiritual strength to wildly attack that thunder force. Long Chen's thunder force crazily attacked those strands of natural thunder force. Although that natural thunder force resisted crazily, it had no further source of power and was unable to continue fighting against Long Chen's spiritual strength that continuously surged out. Finally Long Chen suppressed its berserk nature. After subduing it, he could control it as well as his old thunder force. He used this new natural thunder force to refine the thunder force he had originally gotten from Lai Kai and Shang. What pleasantly surprised Long Chen was that while previously his thunder force had been like a sheep trying to devour a wolf, it had completely reversed now and this new thunder force easily devoured his old thunder force, refining it anew. This new thunder force rushed around Long Chen's body, although it wasn't his core thunder force, it was like a tamed magical beast inside him that he could control as he wished. This new discovery delighted him, and he shouted to Tang Wan'er, let's start, let the lightning be a bit more intense. Chapter 214 Crazy Method Translator Born to be Tang Wan'er was relieved to see that Long Chen was alright and slowly released some of the string, letting the kite rise step by step. By the time the huge kite was almost a thousand meters into the air, it was nothing more than a palm-sized dot in the air. Tang Wan'er's heart was pounding. If Long Chen fell from that height onto the rock mountain, even his powerful physical body would be crushed flat. Suddenly a bolt of lightning struck Long Chen directly again. A powerful thunder force also flowed down the string. She immediately felt her body go numb. Having lost sensation of her hand for a moment, the string began to quickly fly out, frightening her out of her mind. She quickly grabbed it again. Even from so far away, the thunder force was still so strong. She was horrified when she thought about how powerful it must be at Long Chen's position. Long Chen, are you alright? She shouted. That was because she couldn't see how he was at the top of the kite. Still. Still fine. Long Chen's body was quivering. That wasn't from fear, but from the thunder force that was wildly wreaking havoc in his body. 
He was shaking as if he was having a seizure. This time the Thunder Force was even more berserk. If it had been someone else, they would have directly been chaired to ashes. He was glad he had gathered those magical beast bones and hides for this kite. The Thunder Force wouldn't affect them much and so he would be able to stay up here for longer without any worries. Long Chen stayed up there for a quarter hour before finally refining that Thunder Force, increasing the amount of Thunder Force in his body. Bring me up a bit higher. As the kite gradually grew higher, Long Chen's chance of being struck increased. On average, it was around an incense stick's amount of time between lightning strikes. The terrain was extremely special here. Black thunder clouds gathered here and would never scatter. Whenever the thunder force accumulated to a certain level, it would crash down upon the ground. That was why the mountain peak was completely bare. It had already been struck by lightning countless times. Since Long Chen was intentionally drawing the lightning towards him, it was naturally easy for him to be struck on the ground. Tang Wan'er saw Long Chen be struck several times. His hair stood on end like a hedgehog, but he wasn't suffering any injuries. Only then did she relax slightly. Inside she sighed that Long Chen really was a monster, but he was also a madman. He could think of all sorts of crazy ideas. Even crazier was that he would actually follow through on those crazy ideas. She had already smartly figured out how to avoid being impacted by the lightning herself. The instant the light appeared over Long Chen's head, she would let go of the string. Once that lightning fell, she could grab it again less than couple seconds later. Natural thunder force came quickly, but it also went quickly. This way Tang Wan'er didn't need to suffer being impacted by the thunder force as well. Although the thunder force that was transmitted down was much weaker, it would have still been something extremely difficult for her to bear with her weaker body. Now that she had figured out the rhythm, it was much easier for her avoid the lightning strikes. Up in the air, Long Chen was constantly absorbing Thunder Force. He could sense his body gradually growing stronger due to the Thunder Force's tempering. Each cell in his body was growing stronger. The slight impurities in his body were being forced out by the power of the Thunder Force. Thunder Force can actually strengthen the physical body. That discovery delighted Long Chen. Then wouldn't he gradually be able to make his own body stronger and stronger? His original goal had only been to increase the lightning resistance of his body for the future heavenly punishment, but he hadn't expected to make other gains as well. At the same time, he also noticed that the golden color in his blood was gradually growing under the thunder forces strengthening. That particular discovery had almost made him jump up in joy. He had accidentally discovered a new way to increase his cultivation base. The golden particles had appeared in his blood once he had advanced to the tenth heaven stage of blood condensation. Those golden particles were extremely sparse, but Long Chen could sense that those particles contained a terrifying energy. Now with the assistance of the Thunder Force, those golden particles were gradually increasing. Long Chen's heart jumped with joy. Now he could quickly cultivate even without absorbing magical beast essence blood. Third rank magical beast essence blood was now already almost useless to Long Chen. His cultivation speed with it was minuscule. Now seeing the golden particles in his blood increase. Long Chen suddenly stood up and grandly roared. Give me more lightning. Rumble. Suddenly the huge black clouds in the sky condensed into a whirlpool and dozens of thunderbolts crashed down on Long Chen. Careful Long Chen. Tang Wan'er turned pale. At some point Long Chen had already floated up right next to the thunder clouds. Long Chen's appearance immediately attracted all the surrounding thunder force. Boom. Long Chen's kite turned to ashes, while Tang Wan'er was sent flying by the terrifying thunder force. Long Chen. Tang Wan'er let out a startled cry, looking up into the sky fearfully. The kite had already been turned to ashes, and Long Chen was tumbling down like a falling star. To fall from over 3,000 meters onto hard rock, Long Chen would definitely die. Tang Wan'er frantically rushed over, wanting to save him. But when Long Chen was a couple hundred meters from the ground, he suddenly took out a large umbrella. Opening the umbrella, Long Chen's descent immediately slowed but the huge force caused the umbrella to directly collapse. Once more falling, when he reached a height of 30 meters, he took out another umbrella, slowing down again. So in the end, his impact on the ground was the same as if he had only fallen from less than 20 meters. Tang Wan'er was startled and relieved. She really hadn't though Long Chen would be that smart and had arranged backup plans. But to fall from that height could definitely still cause some injury so she hastily ran over to support him. Ah. Tang Wan'er had only just touched him when she immediately received an attack from a terrifying thunder force. Only then did she realize with horror that Long Chen was covered in thunder force. His skin had turned black like coal. 
and occasionally explosive arcs of electricity would jump out. This scoundrel, is he crazy? Tang Wan'er might not be exactly clear on what Long Chen was doing, but as a monster class expert, she could sense a terrifying, berserk thunder force within his body. She could tell that he was tightly locking that thunder force in his body. He was clearly struggling fiercely with it just to keep it in his body. He was actually using his body as a prison to keep the thunder force in. That was too crazy. She also immediately realized when Long Chen had been struck by those dozens of thunderbolts. He hadn't resisted them at all, intentionally drawing them into his body. Just thinking about that gave her shivers. Just what kind of monster was Long Chen? That thunder force that was running rampant throughout his body would be able to turn a tendon transformation expert to ashes. But Long Chen actually wanted to trap and raise it within his body. Although Long Chen was completely motionless on the ground, Tang Wan'er wasn't too worried yet. Long Chen's spiritual strength was still fiercely attempting to subdue the thunder force in his body. There were a couple times when that thunder force almost erupted like a volcano, only to be forced back by Long Chen. Those times gave her quite a worry. If he wasn't able to force back that eruption, Long Chen wouldn't even have a corpse left. He was practically gambling with his life. And yet she also didn't dare go help him. There was no way she could do anything for him. And in fact, she might end up disturbing him. She could only watch helplessly. Madman. Madman. He's definitely a madman. Tang Wan'er angrily repeated that as the Thunder Force chaired his body black. She was both angry and distressed. She wondered about his past and sighed. She really couldn't imagine just what Long Chen had endured for him to cultivate with his life on the line like this. He was clearly already strong enough. With a blood condensation cultivation base, he was able to fight across realms, even able to defeat Ring's strongest one amongst them. Gu Yang. What more did he want? Suddenly Long Chen vomited out blood. The thunder force in his body had become even more berserk, actually injuring him. Long Chen, just give it up. Tang Wan'er couldn't stop herself. As long as he released the thunder force out of his body, he would be completely fine. Long Chen didn't reply, only shaking his head, his eyes still tightly closed. It had been hard enough capture so many fat pigs. If he didn't properly slaughter them, that really would be unworthy of the kite he had painstakingly built. But this time there really were too many fat pigs. He couldn't handle them one by one like he had before. Being swarmed by so many really was taxing for him. There were several times Long Chen had thought about giving up, but he was still unwilling. How could he allow this pork to just fly away? That definitely wasn't his style. But he also couldn't refine them all at once because this new Thunder Force had already surpassed the Thunder Force in his body. A single wolf couldn't possibly eat a dozen pigs at once. That was especially the case since these pigs also knew how to bite back. So all Long Chen could do was use his spiritual strength to suppress the crazy thunder force. But even he wasn't sure he would be able to suppress this much thunder force. His powerful spiritual strength surged out of him, suppressing the thunder force to its best ability. The two began a fierce struggle inside his body. This method really was crazy. But perhaps the only person in the world who had a chance of pulling of this crazy idea was Long Chen. It was probably impossible to find another person in this world with such a powerful physical body and such an abnormal soul. Usually those who had powerful souls had weaker bodies like Tang Wan or, as for those who possessed powerful physical bodies, their spiritual strength would be lacking greatly. Gu Yang was an excellent example of that. Other than for using a spatial ring, his spiritual strength was incapable of accomplishing anything else. But Long Chen had both qualities. If he still didn't test it out a bit, he really wouldn't be Long Chen. In order to get stronger, he would be willing to do anything. Otherwise how could he find out his past? How would he get justice? How would he get revenge? Be suppressed. Long Chen roared inside. His last spiritual strength suppressed the thunder force with the force of a hundred thousand pounds of pressure. Chapter 215 Embryonic Thunder Force Rune Translator Born to be Tang Wan or worriedly watched Long Chen. That thunder force had almost erupted out several times causing her heart to pound. But as time passed, the Thunder Force's rebellious will was gradually eroded by Long Chen's spiritual strength. Unfortunately, Long Chen wasn't much better off. Suppressing that much Thunder Force at the same time nearly exhausted him to death. After a prolonged battle, the deadlock was finally broken. Long Chen's advantage was that his spiritual strength slowly recovered with time. But this Thunder Force was without any further reinforcement. After three whole days, Long Chen finally taught Tang Wan'er a lesson. Perseverance always wins. In those three days, 
Long Chen had finally eroded the Berserk Will within the Thunder Force so that it no longer resisted him. But Long Chen was already completely exhausted and didn't have the energy to refine it at this time. He rested a whole day before recovering and beginning to refine the Thunder Force. Because there was no further resistance, it was like a group of wolves had transformed into sheep. Now Long Chen used his previous Thunder Force to easily devour this new Thunder Force, increasing his own Thunder Force. Long Chen immediately gained control of over 10 times his previous Thunder Force. He was also pleasantly surprised to see that the golden particles in his blood had increased. There were also faint runes that had appeared in his blood. Those runes were extremely minute and very weak, but they were definitely a kind of rune. Connecting to those runes in his blood, his face immediately erupted into ecstasy. What happened? When Tang Wan'er saw Long Chen finally open his eyes, she was given a fright. Ha ha ha, I've really struck gold. Long Chen hugged Tang Wan'er and crazily spun around, unable to control his own excitement. Aya, scoundrel, it hurts. Let me go. Tang Wan'er's heart pounded as she was hugged by Long Chen. Her red face almost seemed like blood would drip out of it. She felt warmth, bashful, as well as a bit angry. Long Chen let her go and awkwardly apologized. Sorry. I forgot myself. Tang Wan'er's face was completely red and she didn't dare look at him. It wasn't as if she could say it was alright. As wouldn't that encourage him to do that a second time? What's going on? Why are you so excited? Tang Wan'er forced herself to be calm, pretending to be tranquil. He, let me show you something good. Buzz. Long Chen opened his hand and a spear of thunder force appeared. Lightning covered it along with faint runes. And it looked just like a real, solid spear. Rumbling sound came from the spear and a terrifying destructive will accompanied it, causing Tang Wan'er to fearfully take a step back. Her shy expression became shock as she stared at that Thunder Force spear in Long Chen's hand. This, this Thunder Force is. Long Chen laughed. Yes, this is the natural Thunder Force I snatched. This time I really did profit. I don't know why, but the Thunder Force's rune automatically condenses within my blood now. In the future I'll have my own Thunder Force seed. Ha ha ha. Long Chen. You really are amazing. Tang Wan'er was truly in awe of him. She actually took the initiative to hug Long Chen in her excitement. Aya, it hurts. Let me go. Long Chen imitated Tang Wan'er's previous tone and expression. Scoundrel, you really don't know how to talk properly. Tang Wan'er was immediately enraged and let go of Long Chen. She gave him a kick. Long Chen laughed and dodged her kick. It was just a joke. Don't be so angry. This Thunder Force will be one of my killing moves in the future. His excitement had still not faded. Now that he could control his own Thunder Force, he could use Thunder Force to temper his body. However, at this time the runes in his body were still in an embryonic state. If he wanted it to progress faster, he would need to snatch even more Thunder Force. In this manner he would have much greater guarantee against future heavenly punishments. Furthermore, his Thunder Force would even be able to increase his own cultivation base and would be a powerful attacking force. It really was like hitting three birds with one stone. With the presence of those runes in his blood, it meant he could transform his own spiritual key into thunder force. So now Long Chen had his flame blade, a lightning blade, split the heavens, and his Feng Fu battle armor as powerful attacks. The last two were especially shocking, but they also were greatly exhausting. His Feng Fu star was not really enough. Now he understood why the nine star hegemon body art involved forming nine stars. That was because without such an ample reserve of energy, it was impossible to keep up with that terrifying consumption rate. One or, let's go do some missions and get some points, said Long Chen. Now they had nothing more to do. It would be best for him to do some missions and gather enough points for the Aleph Pills ingredients as soon as possible. He hoped to form the second star as soon as possible. Otherwise, if he could be temporarily powerful with his trump cards but had no way to maintain it, it would be completely useless. So at this time he needed to increase his ability to fight longer. HMPH, if I waited for you to think of such a thing, it really would have been late. I've long since made the arrangements, snorted Tang Wan'er, wrinkling her nose at him. She had already sent people to complete the monastery's missions while he had been in his unconscious state. Although the Heaven Earth faction was ranked number one this time, there was no way they could monopolize every single mission. They took around 20% of the missions. But to take one-fifth of the missions amongst 17 factions was definitely a large proportion. Furthermore, there were only a dozen second-level missions available. The rest were all just third-level or even fourth-level missions. No matter what, 
the monastery wouldn't allow a single faction to immediately swallow all the points available. After all, everyone needed to struggle and compete with each other. There had to be at least something left for the bottom ranking factions. Tang Wan'er had told him that if the first rank faction completed all the missions they could, they would bring in 270,000 points. Even Long Chen had been startled then. Those points were essentially free since the missions weren't at all difficult. They were more than capable of completing them all. Missions didn't need that many people to accomplish and so Tang Wan'er had already arranged everything. Wan'er, I feel like Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang are trustworthy people. I'm thinking of having them join us, said Long Chen. Even after Long Chen had been exiled, the three of them had never abandoned them, even despite ranking at the bottom because of it. That was enough to win over Long Chen's trust. I don't really get what you mean, said Tang Wan'er. Weren't they all already allied? I mean we should place everyone's earning together. We'll raise all our power equally, proposed Long Chen. Tang Wan'er was startled. That's a bit too sloppy. There's no problem with sisters Hikyu's side. But if all five of our factions formed a total alliance like that, something bad can happen all too easily. The more people there were, the more difficult it would be to stay one family. If one side became dissatisfied, if there was criticism or discrimination, or any injustices at all could have a huge impact. If there was even the slightest mistake, they would collapse from the inside out. There was too high of a chance of their alliance crumbling if they did that. Tang Wan'er felt that the benefits did not warrant the risk. I understand what you're thinking, but I believe with their abilities, they are able to control their subordinates. Conflict will only arise because of irreconcilable differences of opinions. But if everyone saw their power crazily rise every day, what differences would ever occur? Smiled Long Chen. What do you mean? I have the ability to let everyone's cultivation bases to crazily soar. As long as they trust me and let me use their points, I can let their faction grow to an unprecedented power level. Confidently said Long Chen. Tang Wan'er immediately realized Long Chen was going to rely on his amazing alchemy skills to increase everyone's power. Although the monastery's medicinal pills were very expensive, the medicinal ingredients themselves were much cheaper. With Long Chen's abnormal refining success rate, they would be able to greatly save everyone's points. Furthermore, I know the pill formulas for every single medicinal pill in the monastery, as well as pill formulas they don't even know. Long Chen smiled. Within his pill god memories were countless pill formulas. As long as he had enough medicinal ingredients, what medicinal pill couldn't he refine? With enough medicinal ingredients, increasing everyone's cultivation bases was simple. Song Mingguang and them had stood by the Heaven Earth faction even in such difficult times. That was enough to show they were straightforward and upright people. Long Chen didn't like to owe anyone, and since they considered him their brother, he would definitely not disappoint their trust. Since everyone had decided to trust their backs to each other, they should trust each other completely through thick and thin. Okay, you can decide that. There's no problem on sisters Hikyu's side, but you'll have to go to Song Mingguan and them to propose this. Tang Wan'er nodded. Since Long Chen had already decided, she wouldn't oppose him. She actually greatly admired this kind of action by Long Chen. Men should be like that, straightforward and upright, knowing when to repay kindness and enmity. Compared to Long Chen, the others like Gu Yang, Lai Kai and Shang, and Qixin were absolute trash. Such fellows didn't even deserve to be called men. How's your condition? Do you need to rest more? Tang Wan'er worriedly asked when she saw how exhausted he was. It's nothing big. Let's go. Little Snow should have returned. I've already opened a spiritual space, and so I can properly bring him with me. Furthermore, we'll have another powerful helper in the next competition. I want to see if that baldy Gu Yang can still be so arrogant then, said Long Chen with high spirits. Tang Wan'er laughed. Why do you sound so excited? Lai Kai and Chang and Qixin were beaten into dogs by you, and you even defeated Gu Yang. Are you still not satisfied? TCH, I'm not that nice. They made you cry from grief and broke Guo Ran's bones. How could I let it go like that? I have never claimed to be some good person. If someone hurts my friends, I will make them pay such a bitter price that anyone watching won't dare get any further ideas, said Long Chen. Tang Wan'er's heart warmed when she heard that. She had definitely been part of the reason why he had been exiled. The feeling of being protected was definitely a good one. Let's go back. Long Chen walked back in the direction of the monastery. He couldn't absorb more thunder force without some rest first. Tang Wan'er quickly followed after him, curiously asking, Long Chen, 
Can you tell me about what happened to you during your exile? There's nothing good to tell. No, you definitely have to tell me. Aya, it was nothing. Every day it was just hunting, eating meat, and drinking blood. It was really bloody, and there was nothing of interest. Let's just hurry up and not let little snow wait. Long Chen didn't want to think about those things and he also didn't feel like there was anything to talk about. Just like that, he brought Tang Wan'er away from this mountain peak. Chapter 216 Overflowing Killing Intent Translator Born to be when Long Chen returned to the place he had marked, his expression changed. He rushed forward and saw that it was a complete mess. An area of hundreds of meters had been completely leveled. Ditches and scars were dug into the ground. Some of the ditches were even a mile long. There was definitely a large battle here. Tang Wan'er was startled as she examined this land. Long Chen's expression sunk. It seems Little Snow was attacked by people. He rubbed a part of the ground that was dark red. Clearly that place had been corroded by blood. Long Chen could smell Little Snow's scent from that blood. From these scars, it seems that some were made by Sword Key and not a magical beast. But who would attack Little Snow? Puzzled Tang Wan'er. This place wasn't even technically in the monastery's land and so none of the monastery's experts would come here. And if it wasn't the monastery's people, then it had to be outsiders. But there were no settlements within tens of thousands of miles of the Zhuanshan monastery. There wouldn't be any foreign experts coming here. Furthermore, the Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf was an overlord amongst third-rank magical beasts. Although Little Snow was only at the early third rank, an ordinary tendon transformation expert wouldn't dare rashly attack him. Anyone who dared to attack Little Snow had to at least be at the mid-tendon transformation realm. Long Chen darkly walked forward a couple steps and saw more blood as well as a couple footprints. It wasn't one person who attacked Little Snow, but three. Long Chen clenched his teeth looking at those footprints. He was now incredibly worried. Little Snow wouldn't take the initiative to attack others, so most likely he had now fallen into danger. Suddenly Long Chen rushed forward a mile and saw a huge hole here. Within the hole were many marks of wolf claws. Little Snow was captured here. They most likely used a net to hobble him here. Long Chen took a deep breath, trying to maintain his cool calm. But he was simply unable to do that. His voice began to tremble and his killing intent involuntarily began to rise. Tang Wan'er comforted. They caught Little Snow alive. Meaning Little Snow's life won't be in danger for now. They probably want Little Snow as a mound. So we still have time. Long Chen nodded and carefully examined the markings. This occurred two days ago. Let's search around and see if we can find any more clues. Tang Wan'er nodded. The two of them split up to search for any clues left behind. After the time it took for an incense stick to burn, the two of them had already searched an area of five miles. Tang Wan'er shook her head, as she had found nothing. After those people had captured Little Snow, they had used some sort of unknown tool to bring him away. There were no trails left behind. Did you find anything? Asked Tang Wan'er. Long Chen beckoned with his hand, showing her a piece of clothing. It was done by people from the monastery. This is from a law enforcer. Tang Wan'er was startled. Carefully examining that cloth, she saw it was the torn cuff of a sleeve which still had part of the law enforcement's insignia. Let's go. I want to see just who had the nerve to do this. Killing intent sword from Long Chen. This time he was truly infuriated. For them to scheme against Little Snow made him angrier than being stabbed himself. Once he returned to the monastery, he directly returned to his immortal cave and summoned all the disciples who were cultivating. He asked them all about what they had heard or seen. Quite a few of them had left the monastery in the past few days and might have seen some odd movements. He also told Ye Hikyu, Song Mingguan, Li Qi, and Luo Kang to tell their people to investigate. Perhaps their disciples who were outside completing missions might have seen something. That was especially true of those disciples who were completing patrol missions on the borders of the monastery. Ever since Little Snow had been the size of a palm, he had always been with him. He was like his own child, and he was unable to accept anything happening to him. Senior brother Long Chen, there's someone outside looking for you. Suddenly a disciple ran over frantically. Long Chen was delighted, thinking it was news of Little Snow. He was about to say something when a familiar voice rang out. Why are you guys so annoying? I want to see my brother Long. So don't block me. Although that person wasn't purposely shouting. His voice was like a loud bell. Shaking people's eardrums. Hearing that familiar voice. Long Chen was overjoyed and hastily rushed out his immortal cave. He saw over a dozen disciples attempting to block one person. That person was already over three meters tall and huge muscles bulged all over his body. 
making him seem like an iron tower. At the same time, he was also like a volcano, filled with an explosive strength. On his back was spiked club. The handle part of it was as thick as a person's thigh while the head was the same width as a barrel. Standing there, he looked like some terrible fiend with his incredible imposingness. Although there were over a dozen disciples facing him, their faces were all pale with terror. Tang Wan'er was also frightened. This was the first time she had ever seen such a terrifying looking person. He was at least a head taller than even Lai Kai and Shang. His arms as thick as barrels. His key surged out shockingly, seeming like some kind of monstrous beast. Wild. Long Chen looked at that giant with disbelief. He and Wild had been separated for so long now. Long Chen's call immediately caused Wild to turn to see him. Wild roared happily and charged over at him. This time everyone really was scared witless, thinking Long Chen might be crushed. But Long Chen was also wild with joy as he rushed over to Wild as well. The two of them tightly embraced. Wild even began to cry. Brother Long, I finally found you again. Good brother, don't cry. Didn't we already say that no matter how much blood we bleed, we'll never cry. Although that was what he said. Long Chen was also almost choked with tears. Wild was like his real brother, within the monastery where he had no family at all. Finding Wild was even more emotional. Wild hastily wiped away his tears and simple-mindedly said, Okay, Wild will listen to you. Even after being separated for several months, Wild was still as simple and straightforward as ever. Long Chen patted him on his thick arm a couple times with some shock. The current Wild had thickened everywhere. His muscles almost looked like they might burst. His key and blood looked like they might be even more terrifying than a third-rank magical beast. Don't be worried everyone. Wild is my brother. Everyone can go back to what you were doing. Long Chen brought Wild back to his immortal cave. He introduced Wild to Tang Wan'er and King Yu. The two of them were extremely out of sorts. Wild looked too terrifying. Like a giant giving off a powerful pressure. They felt as if just a wave of his hand would crush them. But then seeing how simple and honest he was, they gradually calmed down. How have you been recently wild? Asked Long Chen. When he had arrived at the monastery, Long Chen had asked Tu Fang about wild. At that time, Tu Fang had only said wild had gone out with someone else. But he had always refused to tell him where he had gone. I'm really good. Following that old man, each day I can eat till I'm very full. Wild scratched his head very contentedly. Who is that old man? Asked Long Chen. Aya, I think I remember he told me he was called something, but I don't remember. He just told me to call him master. Wild shook his head. You've formally gotten a master. Long Chen was happy for him. If an elder was his master, that would definitely be a blessing for Wild. With the special nurturing of a powerful elder, it was no wonder he was so strong now. It really was a case of a fool's luck. Tang Wan'er and King Yu were both startled. The monastery's rules were strict and an ordinary elder was not allowed to accept disciples. That would break the impartiality of the disciples' competition. If an elder wanted to accept a disciple, it required the approval of the sect leader. Those that had been accepted by an elder were not allowed to participate in the competitions and would be supported solely by that elder. But this fellow didn't even remember what his master's name was. He really was a marvel. Both Tang Wan'er and King Yu's expressions became a bit strange. Yup. The old man said he has accepted me formally as his disciple and that he'll never let me go hungry again. He really does treat me well. Each day I get to eat till I'm super full. Wild nodded. Tang Wan'er couldn't hold back from cutting in. Are your dreams that simple? Just eating till you're full is enough. Of course. I was always afraid of starving when I was younger. If it hadn't been for Brother Long taking me in back then, I would have starved to death. As long I have enough to eat now, I'm satisfied. Wild laughed naively. Long Chen smiled. Tang Wan'er was only so surprised because she had no idea just how much Wild could eat. Let me examine your body. Long Chen placed his hand on Wild's shoulder, sending in his spiritual strength. He was pleasantly surprised to see that almost 30% of his cells had activated at this time. Furthermore, there were some odd things that had appeared in his blood now. Those things looked like very tiny tadpoles. But no two tadpoles were the same. It looked like a kind of rune. But those runes were alive within his blood, constantly swimming around. Long Chen sensed a terrifying pressure from those tadpole shaped runes. It seemed like each rune possessed a power that could destroy the world. Although this was still just an embryonic form, it still possessed such power. It was just like a lion cub. It might appear like a cute puppy at the moment, but in the future it would grow into a terrifying lion. Furthermore, 
the pressure he sensed from the runes in Wild Body was already so terrifying. When they matured, he would definitely be no lion, but a true monster. Long Chen shook. When Wild grew up, would he be the same as that ferocious beast? Long Chen would never be able to forget that dream he had had. In that battle, a single fist shattered the void and a single roar destroyed stars. That was an apocalyptic power. If that was true, that just how terrifying was Wild's origin? Long Chen continued asking Wild how he had been during the past few months. Wild said he would go hunting and eat meat with the old man every day. If he could beat the beast then he would beat it. But if he couldn't beat it, the old man would help. Every day he would eat till he was full. Wild, how much do you eat a day? Tang Wan'er finally felt that something was off and asked this crucial question. If it's third rank magical beasts, and if they're a bit bigger, I eat three a day. If it's a fourth rank magical beast, just one is enough, replied Wild. Both Tang Wan'er and King Yu covered their mouths in shock. He ate three third rank magical beasts a day, and they actually had to have large bodies? And he was actually able to eat fourth rank magical beasts? Just what level had his elder reached? Senior brother Long, we've found news of Little Snow. Suddenly a disciple ran in and reported to Long Chen, panting for breath. Long Chen immediately stood up, his killing intent once more overflowing. Chapter 217 Furious Wild Translator Born to be senior brother Long Chen. Three days ago, one of senior brother Song Mingguan's people was working when he saw three law enforcers carrying a large object back to the monastery. Reported that disciple. Could he tell that it was Little Snow? Frantically asked Long Chen. He shook his head. That disciple said it was covered in layers of clothing and he was unable to see what was inside. But based on the shape, it was similar to the body of Little Snow that you described. Furthermore, that disciple said those three law enforcers were somewhat out of sorts. There were even blood stains on them. They should have just experienced a great fight. Long Chen's heart pounded. Then that really was likely to be Little Snow. But he still didn't know just who had done it. The monastery had over a hundred law enforcers covering a dozen areas. They weren't always in the same place. He would need to investigate this more. What happened to Little Snow? Asked Wild. He was captured by others. Long Chen ground his teeth. Who dared bully Little Snow? Wild will crush them with a single club. Wild was furious. At this time, Ling Hao walked in. Ling Hao was the only male amongst the Heaven Earth faction's inner disciples, and his cultivation base was pretty good. Senior brother Long, a disciple requests to see you from outside. He says he had something important to report. Ling Hao saluted. Let him in. Hastily said Long Chen. At this time, a somewhat thin man walked in. When Long Chen saw that man he did feel he was a bit familiar, but he didn't recognize him. Shao Kian greets senior brother Long Chen. He directly cupped his fists to him. Many thanks for senior brother Long Chen's life-saving help back then. Long Chen was confused for a moment. Then he thought of it. You are. Yes, it's me. If it weren't for brother Long helping, Shao Kian would already be buried with the fishes. Gratefully said Shao Kian. Long Chen finally remembered this person from back in the trial region. There had been a fierce river that had blocked their path. Yes Hikyu had used her ice energy to cross over gracefully like a fairy. One person had tried borrowing her leftover ice to cross as well. But that ice energy hadn't lasted for long before dropping him into the river. Causing the Tijermuth fishes to attack him. Back then Long Chen had thrown out a stick to pull him back. Saving his life. Senior brother Long Chen. A couple days ago I joined Qi Zin's faction. I had to secretly come here, said Shao Kian. When Long Chen had defeated Gu Yang, he had also beat Lai Kian Chang and Qishin Black and bruised. Later they were then almost beat to death by the crowd. After recovering, Qishin returned to his faction and his temper exploded on his people. That flag bearer disciple was directly beaten unconscious by him. Qishin had then cursed everyone, and quite a few people had been expelled from his faction. Shao Kian had borrowed that opportunity to join his faction. Senior brother Long Chen, I, Shao Kian, owe you my life. My coming here is tantamount to betraying them. So I also won't return to Qi Xin's faction. I came here to tell you that four nights ago, Qi Xin got completely drunk and said he would take revenge on, letting you taste pain. Later I then heard the next day he personally went to find some law enforcers. I don't know whether that has anything to do with your mound, explained Shao Kian. Everyone in the monastery already knew that amongst the new disciples, Long Chen was the only one with a third rank mound. Before the trial had even begun, Qishin had wanted to humiliate Long Chen, but had been defeated by Little Snow. 
And now Long Chen learned Qishin had raved about getting revenge and had gone to see the law enforcers. The very next day, Little Snow had disappeared. Everything pointed to Qishin. Senior brother Long Chen. I only know so much. Junior will take his leave now. Xiao Kian cupped his fists and prepared to leave. Don't go back. In the future, you'll be a member of our Heaven Earth faction. Long Chen patted Xiao Kian's shoulder. Xiao Kian was startled, looking at him with disbelief. Senior brother Long Chen. Didn't you say you hated traitors the most? I. First you must distinguish between right and wrong. Remembering kindness and enmity. If you know you made a wrong choice, don't stupidly stay on that rotten path forever. You aren't a traitor. Ling Hao. Set Xiao Kian up. He'll be one of our brothers from now on. Long Chen turned to Ling Hao. Ling Hao nodded and also patted Xiao Kian's shoulder. Smiling. Brother. Let's go. I'll go get you a dwelling. Xiao Kian was incredibly moved. Never imagining Long Chen would take him in. Warm tears appeared in his eyes. I, Ling Hao cut him off. Come on, don't be like a woman. But as soon as he said that his expression changed. He turned to see Tang Wan Er and King Yu staring at him expressionlessly. Ling Hao knew he had misspoke. Sweat rolled down his face. But he also had no explanation. He hastily pulled Xiao Kian out. Long Chen, what should we do? Asked Tang Wan Er. What possible choices are there? If they want to scheme against me. That's fine, but if they dare scheme against my friends, I definitely won't let them off. Long Chen's gaze was as sharp as sword, but we have no proof. Tang Wan Er knew they couldn't go to the upper levels of the monastery with just Xiao Kian's little testimony and some coincidences. Looking for proof isn't my style. Let's go visit that mountain. Long Chen's expression was icily sinister. When Tang Wan Er and King Yu heard him say that, their scalps turned numb. HMPH, who dares bully little snow? Brother Long, we'll definitely beat the crap out of them. Wild followed Long Chen outside. Tang Wan Er and King Yu hastily chased after them. Tang Wan Er pulled on Long Chen. Should we gather our people? She had an understanding of Long Chen after all this time. Now, Long Chen's fury was practically steaming out of his head. Something major was very likely to happen. You go and gather everyone. Wait for me in the Zhuanshan Plaza. I'm going to visit that mountain with Wild. Nodded Long Chen. He then brought Wild down the mountain. Tang Wan Er and King Yu glanced at each other, both seeing the other's worry and helplessness. Long Chen was one of those people who would rather die than surrender or compromise. And they had long since heard that the emotional connection between him and Little Snow was incomparably profound. Little Snow had now been captured, and that unconcealable killing intent soaring off Long Chen was already proof enough to confirm Long Chen had reached his breaking point. Something big is about to happen, sighed King Yu. But they both knew they couldn't stop it. They split up to alert Song Mingguan and them. If they were going to make a ruckus, they might as well make it a bit bigger. With many people supporting him, the worst that could happen was that he would be exiled again. But having returned once, they were confident he could do it again. When Song Mingguan and them heard that it was actually Qishin pulling the strings, they were all infuriated. They wanted to charge over to help. But Tang Wan Er stopped them. Long Chen had told them to gather at the Zhuanshan Plaza so he must have some kind of plan. They could only suppress their fury and go wait for him. For five great factions to gather in the Zhuanshan Plaza, all the other disciples were alarmed. They had no idea what was going on. Why were the five factions releasing such a murderous intent? Those disciples that saw that scene all returned to report to their bosses. Even an idiot could realize something big was going on. There was no one who wasn't curious. After sending a report, everyone prepared to watch what was about to unfold. When Long Chen and Wild reached Qizin's faction, they were immediately blocked at the mountain path. But Long Chen seemed to not see those people in his way and just walked up normally. Stop. Don't force us. One of the disciples fiercely spoke out. But all them were already terrified of Long Chen after that last faction competition. Unfortunately, as a member of this faction, they had no choice but to at least act their part. Following that person's shout, more and more disciples rushed over. Seeing Long Chen with that fiend-like wild, sweat poured down their backs. Long Chen's sinister expression was completely terrifying. Even in the last fight, his expression had been completely calm. But now, that dense killing intent pouring out of him made them tremble. They felt as if a sharp blade was pressed right up against their throats. It was as if a single thought from Long Chen would be enough to kill them. Long Chen didn't pay the slightest bit of attention to these disciples. He and Wild continued forward and those disciples immediately made a way for him. Wild icily glanced at them, 
The current wild was not the same as he had been back in the capital. He was filled with the wild nature as if he were a monstrous beast. Then adding on his frightening stature, he really was an absolute freak. That massive spiked club also made it hard to breath. Wild followed behind Long Chen. The disciples in front of them continuously retreated nervously. That continued all the way until they reached the immortal cave at the peak. All the faction's mountains were essentially the same structure. This was the residence of their core disciple. Qishin, get the fuck out. Long Chen's sudden cold shout shook the heavens, rumbling through the mountains. Countless echoes reflected off those stone walls. Get the fuck out. Fuck out. Fuck. Wave after wave of echoes rang throughout the mountains, like replies to his furious killing intent. Suddenly, three people charged out of the immortal cave. Gu Yang, Lai Kai and Shang, and Qi Xin were all unexpectedly present. Qi Xin's expression changed when he saw Long Chen. He quickly suppressed a frantic expression. Long Chen, you really are too brazen. How dare you come to my territory and behave so rudely. But Long Chen could hear the trembling in his voice. That proved he was nervous. But within that nervousness, there was also a trace of excitement. All that proved that everything had been Qi Xin's contemptible scheme. Fucking die. Long Chen couldn't hold back anymore and roared. His bone blade appeared in his hand and he charged at Qi Xin. Gu Yang roared and the runes on his lit up. His battle power soaring to his peak instantly. Long Chen. This time I'll force you back. Gu Yang sent a punch straight at Long Chen. However, he had forgotten one thing. With his focus completely on Long Chen, he had completely ignored Wild. How dare you attack my brother Long? Go to hell. Space trembled, almost seeming as if it would explode. As a huge spike club swung at Gu Yang. Chapter 218 I'll bring you to kill people translator. Born to be space seemed to almost break apart as Wild's huge spike club smashed at Gu Yang. Gu Yang hastily went to block. But what was shocking to everyone was that when that club smashed onto Gu Yang's two arms, a loud explosion rang out mixed with the sound of bones breaking. Gu Yang let out a miserable scream as he shot back like a cannonball, smashing into the immortal cave and causing half of it to collapse. These immortal caves were made of special rock and were incomparably hard. But even so, half of it had collapsed. The only person who wasn't shocked was Long Chen. He had examined Wild's physical body earlier and knew that his strength had already surpassed everyone's imaginations. Wild's strength had always been terrifying. But now that 30% of his cells had been activated and those strange runes had appeared in his blood, his strength had already reached a completely abnormal level. Then adding on his huge club, the fact he hadn't crushed Gu Yang to pulp already proved how powerful Gu Yang was. While everyone was still filled with shock, Long Chen's bone blade reached Qi Xin's body. Qi Xin frantically summoned his water shield to protect himself, but his water shield was like paper in front of Long Chen's bone blade and immediately collapsed. Long Chen's bone blade smashed into his stomach, and a huge force sent him flying. The sound of bones breaking rang out, and he vomited out blood. Qi Xin was horrified that his own cultivation base had been suppressed in front of Long Chen's terrifying killing intent. In front of that killing intent, his will was greatly affected and he was unable to release even 80% of his strength. Lai Kai and Chang was also completely horrified. The current Long Chen really was like a death god. He was so horrified that he couldn't even bring himself to think about resisting. But he instinctively released his own thunder force when he saw Qi Xin be so heavily injured in one blow. He slashed down on Long Chen with a lightning blade. Long Chen coldly snorted, sticking his bone blade into the ground. His right hand formed a fist covered with thunder force. Bang! Lai Kai and Chang's lightning blade burst apart when it collided with Long Chen's fist. The most shocking thing was after destroying that thunder blade. The power behind Long Chen's fist hadn't diminished in the slightest and it directly smashed into his stomach. With more sounds of bones breaking, Lai Kai and Chang vomited out blood and looked at Long Chen with completely shock and horror. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. How can you control such a terrifying thunder force? Lai Kai and Chang miserably slammed into the wall of the immortal cave vomiting out more blood, but it was like he couldn't even feel his own injuries as he stared at Long Chen. As a lightning cultivator, he naturally knew that Long Chen had used Thunder Force just now. All cultivators with attributes like lightning were all born with a natural bloodline, but Long Chen had no such bloodline inheritance. The most shocking thing to Lai Kai and Chang was that Long Chen's Thunder Force was even more powerful and destructive than his own. In front of that terrifying Thunder Force, his own thunder force was like a little puppy that had met a lion. It was completely unable to resist. He could accept not being a match for Long Chen. 
but he was unable to accept that Long Chen could control Thunder Force and that his Thunder Force was actually thousands of times stronger than his own. That was the greatest insult to him. Someone without any bloodline inheritance had somehow managed to control Thunder Force? That filled him with shock as well as a profound feeling of powerlessness. When he had been miserably defeated by Long Chen, his confidence had been given a great blow. But he still had his own pride. As the number one junior generation of his family, he believed that as long as he could activate his ancestral mark and use his powerful Thunder Force, he would be able to eventually defeat Long Chen one day. But now Long Chen had displayed such terrifying Thunder Force of his own, that had immediately turned any of his hopes to ashes. In front of that terrifying Thunder Force, his own power was far from lacking enough to resist. He had no idea that Long Chen's Thunder Force had come from heaven and earth. It was the most violent and berserk Thunder Force, and in terms of quality, it possessed a definite superiority over Lai Qianchang's Thunder Force. Long Chen had used his full strength and effort to devour that natural Thunder Force. And back then, that natural Thunder Force had swallowed the Thunder Force left behind by Lai Qianchang in his body in just one gulp. It was obvious that the two were not even in the same class. Those surrounding disciples were completely dumbfounded. Three core disciples had all been defeated in just one move, and amongst them was even Gu Yang. Right now, Gu Yang's arms had already become deformed, but it went without saying that his body was still powerful. Even after smashing into the immortal cave and causing half of it to collapse, he had yet to faint and was staring at Wild with shock. Lai Qianchang was also leaning against the wall, his face white as paper. He looked expressionlessly up at the sky, not knowing what to think. Lai Qianchang, you might have a violent nature and be extremely arrogant, but you're inferior. Corrupt side still isn't that bad. Today, I'll let you off once. As for what choice you make in the future, that will be up to you. Long Chen didn't actually feel that much hate for Lai Qianchang. In his eyes, Lai Qianchang was just an arrogant child. He still didn't have much understanding over right and wrong. The reason Lai Qianchang had done all this was mostly at the urging of Qixin. And so, Long Chen decided to let him off this time, hoping he would be smarter than before. Although they had fought before, Long Chen had also gained a benefit from that. If it hadn't been for Lai Qianchang's Thunder Force Seed, he still wouldn't be able to control his own Thunder Force. And without that Thunder Force, he wouldn't have been able to scheme against Ji Yui Sha and would have definitely died in that cave. If it hadn't been for Lai Qianchang's Thunder Force as a foundation, he also wouldn't have been able to control his current natural Thunder Force. Although he knew Lai Qianchang had originally had some malicious intentions against him, Long Chen had definitely benefited from it in the end. As someone who remembered favors, he gave Lai Qianchang one chance. As for what he would choose, it would be up to him. Of the three attacks launched against the three of them, the attack against Qixin had been the lightest. However, he was the most heavily injured of the three. That was because he didn't possess such a powerful physical body as the other two. Long Chen's bone blade had smashed his bones to pieces, and he felt as if his body was about to completely collapse. Even his aura was scattered, unable to recondense. Placing his bone blade on his shoulder, Long Chen slowly walked over to Qixin tell me where Little Snow was taken. Qixin had been gasping for breath, but when he heard Long Chen's question, he began to crazily laugh. Ha ha ha. So you already knew? He, unfortunately, I won't tell you. So what are you going to do? If you want to know, kneel down and beg me. Qixin laughed just like a madman. His eyes were completely crazy and his expression was extremely sinister. He looked just like a wounded beast. Long Chen grabbed Qixin's collar and threw him outside. Qixin muffled a shout. Being so injured, that toss caused his bones to shift. An unbearable pain. But he was also a vicious person. Even though the pain made him sweat, he still wouldn't relent. He sneered, I know who has your wolf. If you go now, maybe you'll be able to see it. But if you're too late, all you'll be able to see is wolf meat. Ha ha ha. Do you want to know its whereabouts? Then kneel down and beg me. Kizin's crazy laugh caused everyone to shiver. This Kishin really was a madman. To provoke Long Chen like this, wasn't he just begging to die? Those underlings of his were all terrified. This was the first time they saw how terrifying a madman could be. Normally when they followed beside Qixin, he was always so intellectual and resourceful. But ever since he had met Long Chen, he had gradually been left behind. Jealousy gave birth to hate, and he lost all his smarts. Ever since the first moment he had plotted to plant traitors in Long Chen's faction, a sinister seed had been buried in his heart. That seed was nourished by his jealousy and hatred. 
crazily growing until Kizin's heart had become completely twisted. From the two of their words, everyone had already realized what was going on. Kishin had once more plotted against Long Chen behind his back. Not only were people terrified, but they also began to think about leaving him. If they followed such a madman, they might also end up becoming like him. I'll smash you to death. Wilde was completely infuriated and raised his wolf tooth club. Having fought against magical beasts all day every day, he had already long since forgotten how weak the human body was. If his club fell, Kishin would be turned to paste. Long Chen hastily stopped him. Don't kill him for now. I'll listen to you brother Long. I wasn't going to kill him. Just give him a bit of pain so he'd tell us the truth. Explained Wilde. Everyone else rolled their eyes. That club of his had already beaten someone like Gu Yang into such a state. If Qishin was hit, he would never feel that pain. Leave this to me. Long Chen also felt a bit helpless. Wilde's strength had grown, but his intelligence had not matured at all it seemed. Looking at the crazy Qishin, Long Chen icily smiled. He walked up to him, and stamped his foot four times. Crack. 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 The sounds of bones breaking continuously rang out, causing people to shiver. Everyone felt sharp pains throughout their own bodies as if they were the one being crushed. Qishin immediately let out a miserable shriek. The places that Long Chen was stamping on were the places with the most concentrated nerves of pain. After stepping on those places, Long Chen took out a medicinal pill and forced it into Qishin's mouth. Qishin had no idea what it was and refused to swallow it. But after Long Chen gave him a slap in the face, all his teeth directly fell out, holding open his mouth with one hand. All the spit he had been planning on spitting at him reversed and flowed back through his throat, bringing the medicinal pill with it. That medicinal pill wasn't a poison pill, but a spirit sensitivity pill. It could allow one to sense one's body better and absorb spiritual key easier. Such a medicinal pill was thousands of times more frightening than some poison pill for Qishin. His senses were immediately improved by dozens of times, meaning he immediately felt dozens of times more pain. Even his eyes were popping out from the pain. But he was also unable to faint. That was a torment that was unexplainable with just words. Let me go. I'll tell. I'll tell you. In just three breaths. Qishin was unable to endure. He surrendered in the face of that terrifying torment. Long Chen touched part of Qishin's body. Temporarily blocking his sense of pain. Speak. Your mount is in Wu Qi's hands. Long Chen's expression sunk and his killing intent soared. So his enemies had conspired together against him. Let's go wild. Your brother will bring you to kill people. Chapter 219 Heaven Earth Alliance Gathers Translator Born to be Long Chen slapped Qishin unconscious with a single palm. With his bone blade on his shoulder, he then dragged Qishin by his hair down the mountain. Wild put his club back on his back and followed closely behind him. That huge club didn't seem heavy at all to him. Even once the two of them left, everyone was still speechless. Although they hadn't known for Long Chen. It seemed he had completely changed after returning from his exile. He was now like a rust-covered blade that had been unsheathed and polished, revealing its domineering sharp side. And those ruthless killing blows of his gave them such a sense of pressure that they were completely intimidated. They didn't even have a desire to fight back. One hand holding his bone blade, one hand dragging the unconscious Qishin. Long Chen's domineering image would forever be imprinted in their memories. Today. Qishin had invited Gu Yang and Lai Qianchang over to drink and had told the two of them what he had secretly done. From the patrolling disciples that had gone outside, he had learned that Little Snow's tracks had been found outside the monastery, but Little Snow only roamed around randomly and didn't fight with anyone. There was also no one brazen enough to go provoke Little Snow. Although they had advanced to the Tendon Transformation Realm, Little Snow was a Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf which was an overlord amongst third-rank magical beasts. They were still not brave enough to go provoke him. He had learned about his existence while Long Chen had been exiled, but he hadn't done anything due to his own lack of strength. But this time Long Chen had returned and miserably defeated them, causing them to lose face. Qishin had immediately thought of Little Snow. They might not be able to defaturing Little Snow, but others could. And so Qishin had thought about Wu Qi who had fought with Long Chen. He had secretly told Wu Qi that Long Chen had a third-rank Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf as a mount that was staying on the outer border of the monastery. Wu Qi had immediately gathered two of his fellow senior disciples and gone to capture Little Snow. But he had clearly underestimated Little Snow and the three of them had ended up a bit injured. But in any case, Qi Xin's sinister scheme had succeeded. He had been hoping to have Long Chen fight against Wu Qi when he went to get Little Snow. 
Qishan had heard that Long Chen had mobilized his entire alliance to go look for Little Snow today, and so he had invited the, the other two to watch him fight Wu Qi, but the three of them had only just gathered when Long Chen had come for him, and the result was that he didn't get to watch any good show and was instead beaten into his miserable state. The entire crowd was silent as they looked at each other. No one had any idea what they should do. Should they stay? Should they leave? Gu Yang slowly struggled up. It went without saying his body really was incredibly powerful for him to still be able to stand. You guys go back for now, he told everyone. Only then did they return to their own immortal caves. Some people already began to gather their luggage. That was because they had realized they no longer wished to remain here. Their leader had been dragged away like a dead dog. The entire faction had lost all its face. Furthermore, they had all seen Qishan go crazy just now, causing them to shudder. If this continued, Long Chen and Qishan would forever be arch enemies. The two of them had reached a state where neither would rest before the other was dead. But when comparing the two, everyone believed Long Chen would be the last one standing. What kind of joke had Qishan been trying to play? Long Chen was someone who had walked out of the graveyard of the exiled, the first one ever. He actually wanted to scheme against such a person? Wasn't that just asking for death? The current Long Chen was like a rising star, with the Heaven Earth faction at the head of the five faction Heaven Earth Alliance. Not a single power could shake him. Even a blind person would have been able to see this situation. But Qishan was blinded by his own jealousy and had actually done something like this. There was no medicine in the world that could save him now. Of the three alliances, the Heaven Earth Alliance was clearly the strongest. The second strongest was them for now, but they were mortal enemies with Long Chen. With Long Chen present, they couldn't even think about rising again. And as for Guan Wen and Sai, they had always maintained their neutrality. As long as they weren't idiots, there was no way they would help them out. Then the future was already completely clear. The Heaven Earth Alliance's five factions would monopolize the top five ranks, and the rest would be left for Guan Wen and alliance. As for them, well, as long as Long Chen was still alive, they shouldn't even have any hopes of growing. Since there was no way they could rise as they were, they might as well leave their faction. Even if they weren't disciples of a faction, they could still complete a couple missions. Although it wouldn't be as much as in a faction, it was at least better than being enemies with Long Chen. Being enemies with someone like Long Chen who was like a death god required more than just courage. Furthermore, they didn't even have any courage for that at all. Seeing everyone scatter, Gu Yang swallowed a medicinal pill suppressing his wounds. He sighed. Just Long Chen was already so frightening, but now a monster even more frightening than Long Chen had appeared. They really were without the slightest bit of hope anymore. Gu Yang couldn't help feeling some regret. Back then, he really had been too arrogant to want to rely on his martial might to forcibly subdue Tang Wan Er and them. Originally, he had disdained doing something like putting traitors inside their factions, but after Qi Xin's urging, he had agreed to it in the end. But now because of Qishin, both sides had ended up becoming mortal enemies. Long Chen's sudden rise had caused their future prospects to become dark and dismal. How are you? Gu Yang pulled up Lai Kai and Shang. I've received a backlash from Thunder Force. I'll probably need to recuperate for quite a while, said Lai Kai and Shang gravely. How is that possible? Gu Yang was shocked. He knew that while Lai Kai and Shang wasn't as strong as him, he was definitely extremely formidable and tough. But most shocking of all was that he had been struck by a Thunder Force backlash. That was practically unbelievable, as he was a lightning cultivator. Lai Kai and Chang bitterly smiled. It's true. I don't know how Long Chen did it, but his Thunder Force is incomparably violent. That punch of his not only broke apart my lightning blade, but it caused my own Thunder Force in my body to go berserk, giving me a backlash. Long Chen's punch had broken Lai Kai and Chang's arrogance. This was the first time he felt himself to be completely insignificant. Since there's nothing else we can do, eat a medicinal pill to temporarily suppress your injuries. Let's go take a look. I think Long Chen won't leave this matter as is. He'll very likely go find those law enforcers for trouble. Gu Yang sighed. His arms were both broken. He should have directly gone to the healing hall. But he didn't want to miss seeing Long Chen's vengeance. He had sensed that Long Chen's killing intent this time was even more terrifying than last time. His intuition told him something major was about to happen. Lai Kai and Chang nodded and consumed a medicinal pill, suppressing his injuries. Together, he and Gu Yang walked in the direction Long Chen had gone. Within the Zhuanshan Plaza, the Heaven Earth Alliance's five factions had all gathered. Everyone's nerves were stretched taut, but there was also an indescribable excitement. Previously, 
Long Chen had led them to completely defa Chiring Gu Yang's alliance, allowing them to release a great deal of their suppressed anger. That kind of comfortable feeling was something hard to put into words. Now they heard that Qixin had begun to plot behind their backs. Everyone was preparing themselves to fight with Qi's inside. One or, did Long Chen really say not to go over there? Qixin has so many people under him. I'm worried Long Chen won't be able to handle them all, said Ye's Hikyu. After all, Long Chen was just one person. One person in front of 100 experts would definitely be at a disadvantage. Long Chen didn't go alone. He also has his brother. Tang Wan'er shook her head when she remembered Wilde's giant figure. Although Wilde didn't say much, that powerful pressure from his body was something that even made a powerful expert like her have difficulty breathing. It was obvious to her that Wilde was a truly terrifying expert. With him by Long Chen's side, there was no need to worry. The only thing to worry about was whether or not Qixin had already been killed by Long Chen. That Qixin really is too trash. During the first time, he set up traitors. A completely shameless despicable action. Then, even though his side was clearly stronger and already snatched all the flags, he actually broke the bones of all our disciples, completely insulting us. And now that Long Chen had returned, he paid them back tooth for tooth, eye for an eye, defeating them openly. But they actually then made such a plot. If I was Long Chen, I would definitely kill him with a single slap, angrily said Luo Kang. When he finished speaking, he sensed the atmosphere had turned strange. He turned to see Song Mingyuan, Li Qi, Ye Hikyu, and Tang Wan are all staring at him. Did I say something wrong? Asked Luo Kang at a loss. Song Mingyuan shook his head, worriedly saying, If even you want to kill Qixin like that, then I really don't know if Long Chen will be able to restrain himself. Only then did Luo Kang realize the real problem. Aya, that's true. With Long Chen's temperament, he'll probably directly cut off his head. No. We have to hurry up and go stop him. Tang Wan'er shook her head. It's useless. Long Chen's already been gone for a quarter hour. Even if we went now, it'd be too late. They descended into silence. Last time, Long Chen had killed five outer disciples and been exiled to the rubble wasteland. If Long Chen really did kill a core disciple, then that would be much more troublesome. Everyone was filled with hatred. Qixin really was a piece of dog sheet. If you didn't step on him then he'd constantly release his stink. But if you did step on him, crap would splatter across you. You couldn't avoid it, but you also couldn't kick it away. People are coming. Suddenly a disciple cried out. There were quite a few disciples rushing over to the Zhuanshan Plaza. Amongst them were several core disciples. People saw Guan Wenan and his people. They clearly had been disturbed and come to watch the action. As time passed, more and more people gathered. The originally empty plaza became incredibly lively. There were also several people from Gu Yang's alliance who had come. Seeing that the Heaven-Earth alliance had all gathered here, they were startled and immediately realized something was wrong. There were over a thousand disciples standing in the distance, quietly guessing what was going on. All they knew was that the Heaven-Earth alliance had gathered here. Those disciples had yet to hear of anything else. But it wasn't that difficult to guess why the Heaven-Earth alliance had made such a large movement. As everyone was guessing, they saw two figures walking over. When everyone saw who they were, whether it was people from the Heaven-Earth Alliance or other factions, whether it was core disciples or outer disciples, they were all completely shocked and awed, their eyes almost popping out of their sockets. Chapter 220 Killing Intent Dashes Against the Heavens Translator Born to be when Long Chen appeared, everyone saw how dark his expression was. With his bone blade resting against his shoulder, his right hand was holding a person's hair, and he was dragging him like he was a dead dog. Behind Long Chen was the giant wild who had a 5 meter long spiked club. The pressure he gave off was like he was some humongous divinity, making it hard for them to breathe. Most shocking of all was the person Long Chen was dragging was completely deformed. His limbs were bent and broken in many parts. Qixin, it's Qixin some people finally let out startled cries when they recognized that the person he was dragging was the core disciple Qixin. Seeing Qixin like this, people gasped. A core disciple? an existence that most of them could only look up to, had been turned into this state. Ignoring the bystanders, he walked in front of everyone and threw Qixin to the ground. He said to his people, Today I have a something to ask of my brothers, but this matter could affect your position within the monastery, and you might even be expelled gravely started Long Chen. Long Chen, there's no need to say so much. Since you've called us brothers, your issues are our issues. Tell us what you need. Even if you want us to cut down this statue, We'll do it for you. 
Luo Kang cut him off. Although Luo Kang's words were a bit direct, they represented everyone's thoughts. In their hearts, Long Chen was a true hero. Straightforward, just, and upright. In order to help his brothers avoid humiliation, he had still challenged the authority of the monastery and directly killed five traitors. Then after being exiled to a land of certain death, he had somehow walked out alive, and the first thing he had done when he had gotten back was to let everyone and return the humiliation they had suffered to their oppressors. That kind of boldness had completely won their hearts. Long Chen was an idol, a goal, someone they would follow to death. Even if they were to be expelled or killed, they would still follow this heroic figure. Good, then I won't argue. Let's go all out. Long Chen stamped his foot onto Qi Xin's stomach, and he immediately was awoken from his unconscious state. As soon as he woke up, his body began to shake and he let out a heart-rending shriek like a dying pig. Speak. Where is Wu Qi? Icily asked Long Chen. He's at Odd Peak Pavilion. Station. Qi Xin stuttered out Novaloon.com CM it was simply too painful. That medicinal pill Long Chen had given him had caused his pain to multiply by the tens. He was completely unable to endure it and didn't dare resist Long Chen anymore. Long Chen kicked him in the stomach again, directly making him faint. Once he fainted, the world went silent again, but his mournful shriek of a pig about to be slaughtered still echoed in everyone's ears. Come with me. Long Chen dragged Qi Xin towards the eastern part of the monastery. That was the location of Odd Peak Pavilion, and there was a station where Wu Qi was working. The bystanders were shocked at first, but they then quickly realized Long Chen had gathered everyone not to go fight with Gu Yang, but to attack law enforcers. They were shook, but they were also excited. Probably only Long Chen would dare to think of doing such a provocation. Ever since meeting Long Chen, they had never seen him act according to common sense. There were few who could guess what Long Chen was thinking. Seeing Song Mingyuan and them excitedly following behind Long Chen, Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu exchanged a glance. Smiling bitterly, men really did forever like to fight. It seemed Long Chen had stirred up their instincts, and even those outer disciples' eyes were shining brightly. Tang Wanner and Ye's Hiki really were speechless in front of that. Looking forward at Long Chen's figure, Tang Wanner didn't know why, but she felt her blood racing hotly. That was the kind of stimulation that had occurred when she was a child and excitedly done naughty things. Long Chen really was a typical scoundrel, forever not being an obedient child. All bindings and rules were useless to him, existing in name only. He was like a great pen spreading its wings to fly, trying to shake off the bindings of heaven and earth, shattering all restrictions to be completely free. Long Chen led his alliance straight towards Odd Peak Pavilion. On the way, they just happened to encounter some more people. It's like Kian Chang and Gu Yang. Heavens, they're all wounded. Who did that? Everyone saw the two of them walking over and let out startled cries. The two of them were pale and their auras were chaotic. From the blood covering their bodies, it was obvious they had just experienced a great battle. That was especially true of Gu Yang. Both his arms were bent at odd angles and were clearly broken. As for Lai Kai and Shang, his abdomen was clearly caved in. Both their injuries were severe. There was immediately someone who ran over to them. That person was one of the core disciples in Gu Yang's alliance. Brother Gu, Brother Lai, you guys don't ask for now. Let's just go watch the excitement. Gu Yang cut him off and just followed behind Long Chen. That person immediately followed behind him. At this time, quite a few people thought of a certain possibility and gasped. Within their new generation, there was only one disciple who could injure Gu Yang like this. Then remembering how Long Chen had dragged over Qi Xin, everyone's hearts turned cold. Was he still human? He was more like a monster. One against three. He had defeated and caused them such severe injuries. Seeing Gu Yang follow Long Chen, the crowd also followed. They wanted to see what Long Chen was planning by going to Odd Peak Pavilion. From Long Chen's words, it seemed he was going to find trouble for Wu Qi. They wondered just how Wu Qi had offended Long Chen for him to gather all five of his factions. It might have something to do with Long Chen's mound. Guessed one person. After all, as soon as Long Chen had returned this time, he had commenced a large-scale investigation of Little Snow's whereabouts. They hadn't particularly cared about keeping that secret, and so everyone heard of it, although they didn't know the exact details. But from hearing Luo Kang curse Qi Xin, Long Chen's appearance, and Qi Xin bringing up Wu Qi, they all realized this matter must have involved Qi Xin. Since they didn't know the specifics, no one bothered guessing. They'd find out eventually by following Long Chen. Odd Peak Pavilion was located in a rather remote location on the eastern side of the Zhuanshan Monastery. 
It was the station for law enforcers, similar to how each faction had their mountains. Other than when they did their patrols, the law enforcers could normally be found there cultivating. The monastery had a total of seven such places. Each station had over ten law enforcers. They were the bottom of the previous generation of disciples. By staying, they were essentially half working and half cultivating. The resources the monastery gave them had to be earned through law enforcer missions. Odd Peak Pavilion was halfway up a mountain. There were over ten immortal caves there for the senior apprentice brothers. But those law enforcers all had to take turns patrolling. There were only three of them resting here at the moment. In front of the station was a large wolf tightly bound by ropes, its body covered with wounds. That was Little Snow who was now crisscrossed with countless scars. His blood dyed the earth red. Little Snow was angrily glaring at the person in front of him. That person held a long whip in his hand. That whip was lined with countless iron barbs that were all stained red now. The whip once more thrashed down on Little Snow's body, causing him to roar. But his voice was rough now, weak without any strength. Senior Apprentice Brother Wu. Why don't we just give this up? It's already been three days and you still can't make it surrender. Just let it die and we'll have a good meal, suggested one of the law enforcers. They had wasted a great deal of effort to bring this scarlet flame snow wolf back with them. That was because they had noticed that it didn't have any spiritual imprint. In other words, if they could subdue it, they could place their own spiritual imprint on it and make it amount for one of them. Fuck, this beast is just like that bastard Long Chen. He's like a hard. Loathsome turd. This scorpion hook whip has nerve toxins that will cause incomparable pain. Not even peak third rank magical beasts can resist it. But this brute at the initial third rank still refuses to submit to me after this long. It really infuriates me. Wu Qi angrily thrashed his whip onto Little Snow again. I'll make you submit. If you don't submit, then I'll just whip you to death. Little Snow's body had split open in several places with ghastly wounds. Blood slowly flowed out of his exposed wounds. Senior Apprentice Brother Wu, if you keep that up, you'll really kill it, warned another law enforcer. Even a third rank magical beast would die after being beat for three days like this. This scarlet flame snow wolf was already starting to lose consciousness. That meant its core energy was almost exhausted. Once that core energy was exhausted, it would automatically die. This is fucking infuriating. How could that bastard Long Chen manage to force it to surrender? He didn't even use a spiritual imprint but it still unswervingly follows him. I'm countless times stronger than that bastard Long Chen. So why does he get to have such a powerful mount? Wu Qi became more inflamed as he raged. The Scarlet Flame Snow Wolf was an overlord amongst third rank magical beasts. Once it advanced to the peak of the third rank, it would be an unmatched existence among third rank magical beasts. The three of them were all mid-tendon transformation experts, but they had wasted a great deal of energy to capture Little Snow. One of them had even been struck back by Little Snow in a final desperation attempt and had received heavy internal injuries. So they could all see how terrifying Little Snow's power was. But such a powerful magical beast had actually decided to follow a rookie like Long Chen. And that rookie was the one who he hated the most. Causing him even more fury and enough jealousy to drive him crazy. Since you refuse to submit, then don't blame me for being vicious. If it's something I, Wu Qi, cannot obtain then that Long Chen better not even think about getting it. Wu Qi ground his teeth as he looked at Little Snow who was still glaring back at him. Fury exploded within him and he threw away his whip, taking out a sword. The moment he raised his sword, he suddenly felt a chilling killing intent, a will that seemed to come straight from a death god, and a murderous bone blade slashed down on him.